Six o'clock as we launch a whole new week of MJ Morning Show crap casting. Just a little heads up. Um, feeling a little nauseous this morning. Uh oh. Hey, Froggy. Me too. <sighs> <laughs> Why are you nauseous? Uh, Don't breathe on me, sucker. Post morning. office, five o'clock this morning. What? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yep. Feeling nauseous, feeling queasy, feeling woozy. Little Milton Fludge cow throwback. About your tax bill? Yeah, I had to mail the freaking IRS checks this morning. Well, you know, you gotta, you gotta make money to yeah, owe yeah, the oh, yeah, yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Give me uh, the old, oh, yeah, you had to make it to pay it. I mean, da, da, da. Yeah, give me that whole rigmarole. Why couldn't your uh, company buy an RV last day of last year and have a big write-off? Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. I helped a bunch of people in December and November what, with that. What kind of write-off? All right, wait a minute. Yeah. What, what, so uh, I was the only one there. I just, uh, I meant to do it over the weekend, but I got kind of jammed up. And, you know, Chloe was in the ER on Saturday, so we'll give you the – we got a loaded show today. Chloe – Went to the emergency room at St. Joe's on Saturday while Michelle and I were in the middle of something. Luckily, her boyfriend was with her, and he took her, and then we kind of tag-teamed it after we finished where we were because we couldn't instantly drop everything because of what we were doing and where we were and just all the 
moving pieces and parts. So Chloe was in the ER, and I, I posted a picture. I, I asked her if it was okay if I posted the picture. She said yes. Listen, anything clearly for Instagram hits and followers and likes and all that crap. Right. All right so uh, Chloe was in the ER, the whole story, or whatever she decides to tell. Uh, Festa, did you even see this picture over the weekend or no? So I saw it late last night, and... I thought it, yeah, I, th- I knew it was Chloe, and I was like, holy crap. But you give no details. And, you know, and Hold I was. Hold on, wait a minute. I wrote Chloe in the ER, the story Monday morning on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. Is she okay? Yeah, yeah, she's all right. So she's so, okay. So the, yeah. being that she's okay, now I can say, I'm afraid that you have Munchausen's by proxy, MJ. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, wow. I have Munchausen by proxy. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah, a as lot of it. As soon by the way, I, t- take. The S off? Take, take the S off, and the same thing with anyways. If, I if love you, extra S's. No, it, well, any anyways. So it, just, it lowers, when someone says anyways, it just lowers the IQ to by, you. by to you. 30 to 35 points. Well, I have a lot of points to begin with, so I got some <laughs> okay, you got Don't worry about it. Plenty to shed, is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah. I'm a genius who uses anyways. <laughs> I have a lot of points. Mensa uh-huh. doesn't care. All right, so where the yeah, hell were we? Mensa doesn't care. I saw the picture, and, and then I see the comments... And I'll, most of the comments are hearts or prayer hands or yeah. I hope she feels better. Yeah, and then Froggy's first comment is what? MJ overdose is a real thing. And that's the first one I read. Yeah. And my wife mumbles under her breath, no joke. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> Some people gave me crap about that. Oh, really? Well, they should give There's you crap no about co- it. People were like, is that supposed to be funny? Like, like I, Like I said... Overdose, like she overdosed yes. on like Molly or something. Yeah. Yeah. So Chloe in the ER. I was just Stupid at the people. airport post office <laughs> at uh, four fifty eight a.m. In fact, I I took a picture of me sticking my tongue out at the IRS in front of the self serve postal kiosks, and yeah, I had a mail two things this morning. So I had a had a mail the money due with my extension. And that's a, folks, this is a public service. You could extend if you're not ready to file your income taxes today. And yes, today is April 15th. This is tax day. If you're not ready to file, you can uh, f- uh, file an extension, but you have to have a calculation of how much you owe. Because you can't extend what you owe the IRS. So while you might not have your full return ready to go, you have to pay the IRS what you owe them today. If not, oh, I filed an extension. Yeah, that's great. A file an extension to file your income tax return, but you still have to pay the IRS today or the best possible guess. Because if you don't, they're going to hit you with interest and penalties if you don't pay them today. So I had to pay the IRS today, and my CPA, my accountant, extended. And then I had uh, quarterly estimates due as well. So I had like two checks I had to write the freaking IRS today. So uh, if you want to see the picture of me at the airport post office at 4.58 this morning on the way to the studio, sticking my tongue out at the IRS. Oh, you look like you, an emoji. It's, you got them. <laughs> it's, it's on my Instagram at Certified MJ Radio. That's Certified MJ Radio. Yeah, I really showed them, huh? Well, yeah, stick your tongue out at them. Also. Yeah. <laughs> should, also. should I have done a big middle finger? I'm, yeah, that would be better. I'm doing that now on... Listen, it's. I'm not really ticked off at the IRS per se. It's more like... You know, the checks that I wrote, I just know the amount of government waste that's out there. That's what really... The amount that this government just wastes the BS, the absolute superfluous uh, crap, the fraud, just the the overspending, that's what really gets me. So that's why I'm a little nauseous this morning. I, I didn't come down with the flu or a stomach bug or COVID. Nope. I got the uh, IRS uh, squirts. <laughs> the IRS <laughs> squirts. <laughs> it's also a <laughs> Your new haircut is on point, by the way. You got a haircut? That's, oh, the a shortest, that's the shortest I've seen your hair. In a while. In a while. Yeah, I went shorter. It's, it's not on point. For whatever reason, my my hair has been growing 
Dude, it's the, well, it's hold on. The why, funniest, is, why, it's the funniest looking why, haircut? Why I've do you seen. have to look at the picture, Froggy? You can look at me. You can see the same damn thing. <laughs> it looks funnier in the picture. Why does it look funnier in the picture? I mean, I, I think it's the you, same damn haircut. Look, look at me on MJTV right now. You should comb your hair back. Yeah, with your headphones on. Oh, you want me to do a slick back? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Slick that thing back. You little curly cue boy, you. Yeah, little curly cue. Curly- why, why is my haircut funny? It's, oh, so forget- it's so short. I don't think I've ever seen it so short. Yes, it's been this short. Also, keep in mind that that was just minutes out of the shower because I don't live far from the airport post office. You know, mm. I was only you know, I'm only six minutes away. Five You're still minutes wet. Away. You're still moist. So, yeah, so I'm. Uh, yes. I was still wet, Ew. and the the hair product has not had a chance to set and dry. And then once it sets and dries, I do the little pick out. I do, the, and that kind of fluffs me up a little bit. <laughs> I think you're looking quite a bit younger with your haircut like that, but but like 12. You, look, you think <laughs> I look 12 in this? All right, folks, this, there is a lot going on in this picture, okay? I think we have to drop them off at summer camp or something. <laughs> yeah, so, like you need a lunchbox, like, you, like a Transformers lunchbox in this photo. Oh, you want me to, really? You, want, you got your tongue hey sticking guys, out. guys, you're going to go do my radio show now. <laughs> how, about, how about the sneakers that light up when you walk? Yes. You want, how about yes. I get those things? Yes. No, the, little the sneakers wheels. that... The, the wheelies that, that flash yeah. wheelie little, little led sneakers uh-huh. all right oh, so there's a lot going on in the photo you want to see me at the post office this morning mailing the irs their crap it's certified mj radio on instagram give me a follow if you don't and then we'll get into the chloe matter oh and fester people are very concerned about you let's touch on that when we get back something happened on friday show and people were like oh my god i hope he's okay so we'll get a fester update next. Don't move. I, I haven't even scratched the surface at what's coming up today on the MJ Morning Show. So don't miss one minute. Traffic's on. Let's grab Pat with the latest. 609 and the MJ Morning Show back in minutes.
everybody. 620 MJ Morning Show here on Q105. Another thing we have to address this morning. Uh, Froggy verbally attacking me over the weekend over text. Uh, you know, just, what? No. Uh, that's not for air. <laughs> you called me, a, called me a puss. I mean, you know. Well, you, you left off the Y. <laughs> what? what? What is, what's your issue, man? Oh, you called me a name, oh, too. Oh, because I didn't respond. Oh, after you called me a name, I texted you back a name. All right? Yeah. Froggy, if I don't respond to him in two... Froggy, the guy that never picks up his phone, yeah. you usually never respond via text. And if I don't respond to you instantaneously, you're going to call me uh, nasty names? All right. We'll, we'll address that coming. <laughs> like, like I said. Like I said. It's not my fault you're afraid. I'm not afraid of anything. What are you talking about? All right, all right, all right. I'm not afraid of anything. We'll we'll address this. What is this little conflagration? Well, hang on. We'll talk about that coming up this morning uh, here on the MJ Morning Show. So, uh, Fester, a lot of people were concerned. Yes. Numerous people uh, on, you know what? I didn't get a picture to put on Instagram, and I don't think we used that as a video. We used... Uh, what 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 do you what do we use on the video for Friday? Did we use uh, I guess what Hal Herman was it the Hal Herman video? Uh, I don't. Know. What Friday? happened on Friday with you? Yeah. Fester ate what? four White Castles. Oh, that was were, that Friday? That with were, you? Yes, you. They're your White Castles. What I happened? That, I thought that was Thursday. Hold on. What what day was that? It was, it was Friday. Friday. It was Friday. I thought it, I think it's I think it was Thursday. You know what? I I got confused last week. Thursday, I thought for sure was Wednesday. I think for sure Friday was Thursday. What's, what's today? <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> no, but for real, I, I thought we did it. I didn't think we did it. Hell, Herman Day, I was very like, you know, I, I thought that was Thursday. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know what happened last week, but seriously, on Thursday, I thought it was <laughs> Wednesday. I operated the whole day after the morning show on Thursday. I was dealing as if it were Wednesday. We sound like we're in a retirement home. What day is today? <laughs> what day is it, damn it? No, but that never happens. I, I don't confuse days. I pretty much have those things down pat. You know, the, the, kind of have the days of the week down pat. We hope. Yeah. but You have the time down, too. It's yeah, well. 623. But last week it was odd. All right, on Friday, Fester ate a four-pack of White Castle. It wasn't around this time you popped the first one? Yeah, well, we found them. Froggy, you, you brought them in from your car? because you... well, It was Friday because I was getting my Hell Herman jacket. Right. That's they right. Were, Hello. And they were underneath it. Hello. And I bought yes. them Monday. Yeah. So on Friday, Froggy's Hal Herman ridiculous Technicolor sport coat or whatever the heck that. What? You, People where, love that coat. Where do you get that coat? I sewed it myself. No, you didn't. Just like the mask. You did not. Where did you get that jacket that Hal Herman, your character, It's an wears? amazing site called Amazon. Oh, you got that from, <laughs> from uh, Amazon? Yes, Amazon. You can get all kinds of stuff. So Froggy, for whatever reason, had this in the backseat of his uh, Ford F-150 pickup truck from Veterans Ford, by the way. And Froggy's a very satisfied, you know what? Just like I'll help you with the MJ deal, I got Froggy the MJ deal over at Veterans Ford. So if if you ever want a Ford F-150 or any Ford like Froggy's, uh, you email me, mj at mjmorningshow.com. If you're looking for a Ford, you email me and I'll do the introduction. You can just walk into Veterans Ford and just say, hey, I want the MJ deal, but I'm happy to uh, introduce you personally if you send me an yeah. email, mj at mjmorningshow.com. Froggy was the first MJ deal. It was. That's right. Yeah. He's the George Washington of MJ deals. The father of MJ yes, deals. Yes. Look at my wooden teeth. Yes. So Froggy goes out to his truck to get the Hal Herman jacket for his Hell Herman performances. Yes. And underneath the jacket is a formerly frozen four-pack of White Castle cheeseburgers that fell out of his public shopping bag. Oh, they're so good. And were sitting in Froggy's back seat since last Monday. So a week ago, Froggy purchased these frozen White Castles, and they fell out of the bag. He picks up the Hell Herman, Hal Herman jacket on Friday morning for the big performance, finds the previously frozen White Castles under the jacket. Yeah. So they were sitting there for the rest of... What time did you shop last Monday at Publix? Oh, right after the show, I got... All right, so let's say 11 a.m. So 11 a.m. Monday, all day 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday morning, about six o'clock. Almost four whole days. Yeah. <laughs> Froggy finds the frozen white castles. When you got home to unpack the groceries, you didn't say, hmm, where are the white castles? Yeah, well, I, I was like, <laughs> I was kind of pissed off because I was I couldn't find them. Did you self-check out or did you employee check out? Um, I do self check out. Right, so you knew that you scanned the White yeah, Castle cheeseburger. So why wouldn't you go back to your car to check and see if they fell out of the bag? That's the logical answer. Because I'm stupid. Uh, okay. All right. Now that's it. So Fester grabs the box of White Castles that Froggy brought in that he found in his car on Friday morning, and Fester proceeds to eat all four of these White Castle cheeseburgers that were in, and people were calling BS. I had some guy send me an email. Oh, man, that was a lame radio stunt. He didn't eat those. Oh, oh boy, did he? Let's Dude, not forget he ate one raw. You can watch them on MJTV. It's on video. You can watch Fester eat the White Castle cheeseburgers on our video feed. What, <laughs> what are we, with Dr. The Video? What, what, all kinds of video special effects and tricks? Those are CGI burgers. Oh, yeah, CGI, <laughs> CGI Fester. A uh, CGI slop hole. CGI fat. Where he shoved those things in. Come on. What? Get with it, dude. So what everyone wants to know, Fester, yes. is did you have any, any issues with eating the four-day-old, the frosted, baking in the hot Florida sun inside Froggy's car cheeseburgers? Did you have any aftermath, any problem? None. Wow. Are you serious? None. Okay, I have a question for you. Lay it on me. That's okay, crazy. I was walking down the hall this morning. I see Fester. Yes. And he's standing at like a particular angle. And I say to him, Fester, did you lose weight over the weekend? So did you get, you didn't get sick or lose weight or have a lot? Hold on. You saw Fester in the hallway yes. and you think he's well, noticeably dropped pounded? Okay. Yeah. What did when I say when I saw you, Fester? Yeah, and then Roxanne says, Fester, did you lose weight? Yeah, and I, I said, and just I, like that. Just like that. And right, I hold say, on, stand up. I, I, well, well, there's no need to stand what, up. What, what, what? Because I looked at her, I said, no. And then Froggy comes around the corner and he goes, hey, Fester, are you getting fatter? It's like, possibly, possibly. That's but you know what? Right, Fester's true. like an optical illusion. It, whatever angle you were standing at with your shirt unbuttoned, your or your untucked, I should say, it you looked like you lost weight. Thanks. Mm. Oh, well, uh, stand up. Not, let me see. Yeah, just let me, just take that and case. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Stand, no, no, no. Stand at the angle you were. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. Like that. I'm Giant. fatter from the side. Oh no, my god. No, no. It was a diagonal. You were no, on. No, you no. were like at. You were like no. at. Uh, Hold on. Am I, am I looking at Fester? Or am I looking at Karen Carpenter? Yes. <laughs> I, I wish I was that talented. <laughs> Jesus, you are huge. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Rock says, like, did you lose weight? Which is Rock said, you need to have your eyes checked because also. That the shirt that he's wearing, the pattern Hideous makes pattern. him look like a beluga whale. Or <laughs> well, I, I was looking at solid color shirts oh. this morning. I was like, no, let me look one that makes me look like a beluga whale with barnacles growing on my back. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a good name for you, beluga. Yeah, that would have been. That been. Oh, by the way, people loved when I just haphazardly yeah. and spontaneously called you. Suppository. Well, because I called you a pill first, and then you took it to that level. Listen, and then I, I said, Fester's new. Because you were acting all ornery, and Listen. you've just been grumpy. And I just said, your new name is Coco the Gorilla. What was it? Um, Coco the Gorilla, right? That was that. Your new name is Suppository. Listen, I'll tell you right now. Does that have a ring to it? Hey, it's the MJ Morning Show <laughs> with Roxanne, Froggy, Suppository, and... I, in Beluga. <laughs> uh, just because we have differences of opinion, you come out yeah. so violently, and when nobody, you can call me Hold anything on, you what, want. What, but what with, was vi I was violent with, with with offensive names like suppository. No, you were just being a pill. Uh, well, listen, regardless, Roxanne you, noticed your orneriness listen, first and called you a pill, and then I, I took it to the next level. I you, said, "You're suppository." <laughs> you guys can call me anything you like, but you can't call me wrong. Because all of my opinions are no, some, somewhat no, valid. They are not, not valid. No, no, somewhat no, valid. No, Listen, no, I, I don't, and you guys, yeah. you, not only do you disagree, I, you resort to to verbal violence. I think we're in disagreement here, Roxanne and myself, no, and, yeah. and Froggy as well, because Froggy's complained about your your attitude is just just ornery. Sucks. This one has. It sucks. This Froggy has. Froggy's the one that complained. Okay, I'll buy that for a dollar.
I don't know what that means. Either. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, no issue whatsoever with eating the four yes nearly rancid White Castles. They Nothing. weren't nearly rancid. They have a ton of preservatives in them. They would have been fine probably for another ha- month. Did you read the directions or uh, the um, ingredients? Rather, did you read the ingredients? Well, and did you see the list of? How do you know there's a ton of preservatives? First of all, it's he's fine. Cooked meat. You know, it's it's flash frozen. It was fine. Uh, I only ate one out of the package. The other three I heated up in the microwave. Yeah. And then I got some extra ketchup from the little uh, packet drawer we have in the kitchenette. Uh, Folks, Fester is fine. F-I-N-E, fine. All right. Just getting rolling this morning. I have a great pile. Very diverse, interesting, you know. Very fascinating pile of early morons in the news next here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. Stand by now.
We don't have time to get into it here, but Fester just told me something amazing. Yeah, you, amazing is right. You bought something over the weekend that was I'm, regularly five thousand dollars, and you only paid five hundred dollars for it on ridiculous clearance. A five thousand dollar item that yes. you picked up for five hundred hundred dollars lopped a whole zero off that sucker. Something I would never have owned in my entire life because it was so ridiculously I, expensive for what it is. Did you need this item, or you just bought it because it was originally five grand and marked down to five hundred? Well, it's something I've always wanted, but I knew I would never get because I can't. I'm not going to spend five grand on that. Hold on, Roxanne, were you just checking yourself out in your? Camera monitor? 
why don't you focus on Fester when you? Because you're you're, 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 po- you're posing and you're like doing a. It's like you're doing a photo shoot over here. I, I was doing a photo shoot. Okay, Andrew and I said, Andrew, capture me making some funny photo shoot faces. I mean, you're like flop flopping your hair around. Yeah, and- I was. I was oh, when, busted. When right. you're certain that you're not on Andrew's camera uh, uh-huh. selection, the, ca- the essentially this becomes a mirror. Yeah, you can ex- check your hair. Thank you. See you. If you have a well, in your thank eye. you. You can pick your nose. You well, can. Uh, how do you know that you're not on? Maybe Andrew is punching up your camera for a reaction shot. No, he was that, um, definitely. Th- maybe it was a reaction shot that you were just amazed in awe <laughs> that Fester picked up an item for five hundred <laughs> bucks that was originally five thousand. <gasps> I have been. Tell us more. <laughs> I have been. Uh, Burned several times by Andrew's camera selection. Yeah, me too. There's me more too. video of me rolling my eyes or oh, yeah, yeah, throwing yeah, my yeah, hands yeah, up. We know. Yeah. We know. Yeah. That's that's why you're called suppository now. Is your eye rolling? I'm, I'm right. All right. So I'm what right. did Fester get for 500 that was marked down from 5,000? Yes. We'll get into that uh, next hour. Sure. Here, r- remind me. Remind me to add that to that. Let me write that down before I forget. All right, Fester. All right, dollar sign. All right. Early morons in the news. What time is it? Six forty-two here at the MJ Morning Show on Q one hundred five. Woof! Woman literally dies after getting conked in the head. What's the difference between dying and literally dying? It's good. Good question. All right, that's a good question. Yeah, you know what? I, you know, what? What I should have said was. Oh, I thought it was a headline you were reading. I wasn't. I wasn't being critical. No, of no, you. no, I thought no, you were that, like, no, oh, that, that, those are your I, words. No, those were my words. But okay. let me, if I misspoke, let me rephrase. Woman dies, literally conked in the head. Well, by what? Well, use your brain and the clues that I've given you. A coconut, like, like blues clues. No. Oh, no. You're on the right track. Uh, if if you're literally conked in the head. Oh, a conch shell? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Those oh. are in trees? Oh, Hold on. I never said that the conch <laughs> shell fell off a conch tree. You said the tree. How the hell is it? Uh, Where's we? Conch shells are in the ground. What? Somebody <laughs> took a conch shell and whacked oh. them in a bar fight, apparently. I don't know. Why, why am I thinking that there's conch trees? There are no conch trees. <laughs> there are coconut trees. <laughs> I don't care about cocoa nuts. All right, now I typically Co- would not be doing oh coconuts. I'm confused. Yes, I, I typically coconuts. would not be doing uh, stories from Belize. The, That's where the, right that reminds me. Belize is an area that has a lot of conch. <laughs> well, I think I've been. Well, I've been to San Pedro. San Pedro, Belize. I believe. Hey, Fester, bring up Google Maps. Sure. Uh, San Pedro, Belize, I believe, is on uh, Ambergris uh, Key or I, or K. I was going to invest in a Belize airport one time. I'm glad I didn't. Hold on, what? Yeah. What the fuck? Belize <laughs> airport? What? Why what? What yes. are you going to invest in a Belize airport? Because the guy I was talking to was telling us it was going to be like a what, really, Der- really- Derek Jeter International? No, 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 no. <laughs> Completely I, I, unrelated to, to him. No, this- Person was trying to sell us some land in Belize. So build I, an airport. I've always heard. <laughs> I've always heard Belize is one of the best places for Americans to escape into Central America. One of the friendliest countries. Well, as opposed to like Nicaragua or Guatemala. Well, listen. Right now, I've been to Belize. Uh, San Pedro's on Ambergris Key, right? It's it's off. Yeah. All right. So Andrew's confirming yes. See, Fessa, that's where you expand the map and you see that San Pedro's on <laughs> Ambergris Key, right off of the. The mainland of, and it, it is. Yeah, San Pedro is on Ambergris. And I, I went scuba diving there uh, with my buddy Ed when he used to own uh, Woods and Water out in uh, Brandon, uh, the, the scuba shop. And I went with Ed back in like the late 1990s on a little uh, dive uh, fam trip, a familiarization trip where the resort was just uh, putting him up, you know, just to familiar. It's, you know, the, the, the old uh, travel agent kind of yeah. fam trip. So I went with him, and I had a great time, and we were in San Pedro, but this American woman died after she was involved in a golf cart crash and then a subsequent bar fight where she was smashed in the head with a conch shell. Jennifer Griffith, 46, was riding in the passenger seat of a golf cart that her husband was driving in San Pedro, Belize, they crashed 
into El Norte Bar. So the golf cart crashed into the bar over the weekend, Saturday night. That incident sparked an altercation with some of the bar's employees, which escalated with one of them threw a conch shell that struck the woman in the head. Oh, I th- so she threw it. I was picturing like, no. hey, you want to hear the ocean? Whop! Oh, here, listen to this conch shell. <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's terrible. Uh, Police Commissioner Chester Williams said, It is my understanding that prior to the brawl, the lady was on a golf cart along with her husband, and it collided into a building with the golf cart, during which she may have also been hit uh, in the head. She had a concussion. After the collision, that led to a brawl, and during the brawl, she was also stoned with a conch shell which also caused her head injury. So she hit her head during the golf cart crash, and then she gets whacked again when an employee threw a conch shell at her head. She was taken to the hospital, refused medical care, went home. Next day, had head pain, and then she just collapsed the next day. Sad. She must have had some kind of a, like a brain bleed or oh. you know some subdural hematoma. So if they call you an American national residing on the island, that means you've you've left the United States and you live there full time. That seems that way. Okay. If you're an American national, um, you know uh, uh, America is you're still your home, but you're living uh, in Belize. You know Belize, the official language is English. Did you know that? That's why we were going to invest <laughs> in it an was airport. Easy for business. Hey guys, Froggy <laughs> Caruso here, uh, <laughs> just investigating this story, and uh, I got to tell you, it really sucks, conk. Get the music. Hey, you got to give me enough time to get to the. Yeah! He slowed it as much as he could. Uh, really? Yeah, conk I, sucker. What? Conk sucker. What? I like to eat it. Would, would you like to deliver the line one more time now that I have the. Yes. I have the oh. David Caruso CSI stinger ready. Froggy Caruso here investigating this crime, and it really is. Uh, it sucks, conk. Yeah! Man, that's a terrible story. You know, those things are, uh, did, did it split her head open? They're they're very sharp. No, she had a concussion. Oh, oh nice. Oh, my God. Hold on. De- yeah. Deliver that again. Looks like she had. Go ahead. Okay. Looks like she may have suffered a concussion. Yeah. Uh, that can't be tough. She can't top that. No. I, I feel uncomfortable making jokes about this poor woman. I do. T- it's, it's terrible. It's, uh, it's awful. Know, it, did they start every CSI? Which CS was it? Miami. That the, was Miami. All right. So CSI Miami with David Caruso. Did they start every episode at the crime scene and then he delivered a zinger to launch the show intro? There's compilations no, on YouTube. You the, can watch. The Las Vegas episode did the same thing, but it went to "Won't Be Fooled Again." Yeah. But gotcha. Caruso was so overacting. Yeah. All right. Uh, I feel bad for this woman. It's terrible. So the investigation is uh, ongoing. You know, will the employee be charged with murder? Yeah, should they should be. For uh, throwing a conch shell at this woman's head. God. We're dealing with a lot of conch in prison. <laughs> That's all we serve you in a Belize prison. <laughs> Froggy wants to take the N out so... So bad. What's for lunch? Conk again, boys. Nothing but conk. What? Nothing but conk. All we have. It's a cheap right. local meat. All right. It's 650. Oh, conk man. soup. On, let's... Conk fritters. Conk, you want a conk burger? All right. <laughs> Let me Is that a board. thing? Is hey, that listen, a thing? I love conk sushi. I know. That's... I could eat conk all day. We're serving <laughs> conk sushi on Wednesday. <laughs> You ever have conch sushi? I, I can't, I'm not living unless I have conch in my mouth. <laughs> you never met a bigger fan of the conch than Froggy. I didn't even get to the rest of the morons of the news. You, you conch it. Conk it up. I, I, I can't do it. Bunch of conch over here. All right, 651 at the MJ Morning Show. So I'll, I'll have to... 
I'll have to smatter. Maybe I'll do a couple of additional morons when we get back. The famous 7 o'clock hour starts next, including the hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ on the way. Uh, why was Chloe in the ER? We'll get to that later on. I, she said I can call her this morning. I guess she'll she'll talk about why she was in the ER. Busy show here on a Monday, uh, the MJ Morning Show on Q105. If you're... Uh, if
So hold on, let me get this straight. So you were all clubbing it all weekend long? Is that Roxanne, uh, Fessy, you just walked into the room. Uh, Frog, you just walked in as well. Roxanne's having a conversation with me off the air just, you know, during the break. Ugh, about, why would you do that? About uh, MJ, you don't go to clubs anymore. <laughs> uh, I'm like, well, <laughs> Roxanne, I I never really went to clubs. Yeah, you did appearances and it, stuff in, like that. In my earlier days here in the Tampa Bay area, when I first came to work <laughs> for the Power Big, yeah, when I yeah. I used to do a couple of club gigs. Uh, on like a, a Saturday night, like the crush in downtown Tampa. I mean, if they want to give you 500 bucks to sit around for two hours and drink ginger ale oh, and make some announcements, I'm good. I used to do a couple of live cuttings, yeah, know. you know, uh-huh. from the club. You know, like Matt the Brad or uh, oh God. Uh, Stan uh-huh. Priest. He's Stan, so yes. nice. Matt the Brad is like yeah. one of the nicest people I've ever met. Matt oh, the he's Brad, a gem. Stan yes. the Man, you know, some of the old, uh, you know, Tampa radio club DJ guys. Uh, yeah, but I, I You were big at Coca Bellies. Coca Bellies. <laughs> That's where Dave the Dwarf used to go all the time. Hey, man, going to be at Coca Pelli's this weekend. Is that still around, Coca Pelli's? Oh, no way. I'm sure. (laughs) All right. So Roxanne's having this conversation. Welcome, folks. It is the MJ Morning Show on Q105. MJ and the crew here at 7.03 on a Monday morning. Oh, I have a classic crotchety old man call. Because of the significance of today, I have a classic crotchety old man call that I'll play in our long stretch when we do an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ coming up in about eh, 20, 22 minutes. So I, so Roxanne saying, Hey MJ, you don't go to clubs anymore. I'm like, Roxanne, I never really went to clubs. I'm not really the, the clubber type, but you were saying that the club DJ where you were, and you were down in uh, Hollywood at the hard rock over the weekend. Yes. Yes. Went clubbing this weekend. (laughs) No, I didn't go clubbing, but we, we went to a concert. And so the oh. concert started with with um, Kid Capri, DJ Kid Capri. I have no idea oh, who I the hell that is. Drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Capri Sun. Yeah, the my, inventor my, of the Capri Suns. My grandmother yes. was a big fan of his pants. Yes, the, the Capri <laughs> pants. <laughs> Kid Capri. Them. Who's that? They're like shorts and long pants right? at the and, same time. And folks, if you ever go to the island of Capri. Uh, uh-huh. Off of uh, Napoli in Italy, don't get sucked into the uh, the Blue Lagoon uh, cave tourist trap. All right, go ahead. Okay, so what I noticed is they will play ten to fifteen seconds of a song, and then they're on to the next song. It's so different. I remember, you know, being in the clubs in the early two thousands. And it's like when you heard "Drop It Like It's Hot," you you had a good four minutes to drop it like it's hot. Now you're just starting to like, like, you know, whatever song they're playing. <laughs> Spin it, hits and pop it six. <laughs> oh, that's it. Right. That's it. Right. That's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. it. That's your line. That was my line. That, that, that's all. Hang on a minute. Hold on. Next song. <laughs> oh, this club sucks. <laughs> That's it. it. Hold on. I love that 15 second song. (laughs) More stuff from the 80s. What kind of club is this? So, but then even even like once Ja Rule performed, and then Ja Rule was there. You went to a Ja Rule concert. Yes, and Fat Joe, and it's like I'm all the way up, and I'm really feeling it, and then it's over. All right, now even the the performers play quick. I'd rather punch myself in the wiener (laughs) than go to a Ja Rule show. So I I asked Roxanne. (laughs) Why were you guys in in Hollywood? They went to the Hard Rock in Hollywood, uh, you know, across the state. Yeah, I'm like, the Hard Rock is right here. You can go to the Hard Rock right off I four and Orient Road, man. I tell you what, though, that that Hollywood one is nice. Oh, oh and, and the one here is not. The, no, the, it the is one, the one here is very nice. Our, as well. Ours is nice as well, but is it a big guitar? No, Didn't is it a big famous die of that one? Yeah, yes, Anna, Anna, Anna Nicole, Nicole Smith. Smith died in a bathtub on like the fifth floor oh my or something. God. All right, Pete. Hey, what was the room? Five or six. What floor did Anna oh. Nicole Smith? Yeah, she was found in a bathtub at the, the Hard Rock in Hollywood. I didn't, who? So I said to Rock, uh, 607. Yeah, I know it was five or six. Yeah. Uh, she died in on the sixth floor, room 607. Oh, did you stay there as well? Yeah. Did you, what room? Uh, what room number? It was floor seventeen. No, it wasn't her. It wasn't oh, you her weren't. Room. Oh, you should have. Oh, should've you should have asked for the Anna Nicole room. Listen, yeah. you should have let me know you were going because I would have told you you got to get room six oh seven. That's creepy. You could have taken a bath. I wonder if they took that bathtub out. I wonder if they renamed the or renumbered the room because you know a lot of times 
if incidents happen yeah. in certain hotels, it was, you know, like out at the, um, uh, out in, uh, in Colorado, out, uh-huh. out near Vail, when Kobe Bryant had the issue with the concierge, the young yes. blonde. Yes. That whole allegation. Then, of course, the Kobe Bryant, uh, the whole legal issue out there. I mean, that was a huge deal out in uh, Eagle County, Colorado, uh, you know, in, in Edwards, uh, just to the uh, east of Beaver Creek and Vale, where this thing happened. And there was a resort. It was the Cordillera Resort. And there was a specific room number where Kobe Bryant called the concierge, this young, like, you know, blonde up to the room. And we all remember what the story was oh, there. Oh, she worked there. I forgot about she that. She worked The concierge worked there. She must there. have been pretty hot. And then I, th- she, yeah, she was an attractive uh, young blonde. Oh, and I think on. the story was is that Kobe Bryant said that his TV remote was not working. And she went up to assist with the remote. And Sir, that's not your remote. That's your wiener. Uh, all right. Froggy, <laughs> we... we st- what, what? That's what I meant. So <laughs> that that is like the only word in your vocabulary, Froggy. Wiener? That, no, not today. That is it. I can all say right. penis. All right, stop Sorry. it! Sorry. What is wrong with you? I mean, earlier he was talking stop. about tonks. All right, yeah. stop! The, the yeah, both of you guys, no. stop! Stop! stop. 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 Can you, MJ? Right. Can you say concierge? The the C O N C I. Can you say that again? Concierge. 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 Okay. Okay. That's the proper way. But a moment ago, you were saying. Concierge, no, like you were finishing I, I, it with a I, weird. No, I said concierge. Yeah, that's yeah, that sounds Con- wrong. Concierge, Con- yes, thank you. It, it, concierge is fine. No, it's not. Uh, but some people, <laughs> yes, it is fine. Some people will say concierge, and they'll, they'll like leave the. It's the, con- it's concierge. I don't or deal con- with those concierge. Things, I, I said it perfectly fine. All right. So uh, Hello, the, the am... point is, is that that uh, that Cordillera Resort, yes, out in Colorado, they remove the room number they like renumbered that room because people were asking for the kobe because it was in the news reports like what room it was like it was like room 20 or something or room hey look look that up what what room was the kobe bryant incident in? i think it was like room 20 or room 22 or something how did he get busted again uh by the complaint being filed keep typing dude i forget yeah what room was it yeah what uh, it should be in one of the reports Room. Kobe Bryant room number. Uh, Why are we talking about this? Well, because well, we're talking uh, about uh, that Anna Club Nicole music? Smith. We're, oh. we're talking about uh, oh. Roxanne was at the Hollywood Hard Rock. Yeah. And that's where Anna Nicole Smith expired. Right. And I didn't even uh, know that. How I, did I not know that? Uh, room 24. Scroll up. Scroll no, up. 24 scroll was up. his basketball number. Oh, Bryant. Bryant. Oh, Bryant was that's, 24. That's 24. The only stayed old. old. 24. Yeah. No, yeah, eight what, was his number. Uh, okay. I don't know. No, he was 24 <laughs> when it happened. I guess Kobe, Kobe. Yeah, what what was the room? Let the number? guy have a little fun. The courtier a lot. Anyway, so but the point is, I wonder if they changed room six oh seven or if they eliminated six oh seven, where Anna Nicole Smith expired at Probably. the Hollywood Hard Rock. So Good I question. found a story about that exact situation. Anna. Co- Covering the Whitney Houston and the Anna Nicole Smith hmm. deaths. Oh, that's right. Whitney Houston also, but not at that hotel. Died in a hotel as yeah, well. Yeah, Beverly Hills Hotel, right? So yeah. What uh, with Anna Nicole Smith dying in an accidental prescription drug overdose, and this is a story from 2017. Yep, they changed it from 607 to 609. What's the point of that? Wow, wow. to keep fans away from asking yeah. for the Anna Dude, Nicole suite because you've got like murder and death uh, creepos so, that will want to want to go to the scene of the crime, like like. Mich- I would. Michelle and I did at, at OJ and and, I, and, uh, I and did Nicole it Brown Simpson's place. So by so yeah. yeah, but you know you, you call and request room six oh seven and they can say it's unavailable. Can I say what room did Anna Nicole Smith die in? And they say six oh seven, and I can go. I want that room. But it's, it's not even. You walk down the hallway and six oh seven's gone. According to this report, six oh nine. What if I say? Would they say it's six oh nine? I want to say inside, that's the here's the deal. Inside Edition, Fester just found this. Inside Edition reported on this. How many years? Ago? Let me it see if there's a, a date on it. It was a 2017 article. Uh, yeah. So February of 2017, Inside Edition did a whole story how the Hard Rock in Hollywood they uh, removed room 607 and they made it room 609. Yeah. Well, all they did was really change the tag. Is that uh, like they, they removed com- the removed the room. Oh, and <laughs> it also says they totally remod. They gutted the room and totally remodeled it. That means you could have gotten the Anna Nicole Smith death couch like at like some auction warehouse. 
Yeah. Or, yeah. or no, she died in the tub. I want to stay at the Full House Guys Hotel. Whitney room. was in the tub. Oh, I, yeah. That is over at um, in Orlando. Yeah. At, Bob Saget. That was Ritz Carlton. Ritz Carlton, Orlando. That's where Bob Saget expired. And, and you know what? I do have to say, I said it three times this weekend. I was like, I'm surprised more people do not die in hotel <laughs> bathrooms because <laughs> they are so slippery. I have to like put <laughs> towels down over... Everywhere, yeah. I'm afraid I'm going to get up in the middle of the night and walk to the restroom. Nah, and the, the, slippy, yeah. the slipperiest is the showers. A lot of times, yes. you know, hotel showers can be very... Hey, John Belushi expired in a bungalow. What's up with expired? They're not milk, they're people. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> they died, dude. John Belushi, he died in a bungalow at the Chateau Marmont. They're not driver's uh, licenses. Off, off of Sunset <laughs> in uh, West Hollywood. Hey. I think you can still rent that bungalow where John Belushi died. Dude, yeah. We should do a YouTube channel right. where we just stay in hotel rooms where people die. Let's break it down local. Your boy from uh, uh, Humpty Hump. Humpty Hump. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's, that's local. Died that's local. The Vista yeah. Inn on Bears <laughs> Avenue. Yeah. The, that's right. The digital underground guy. Do the hump to hump. Uh, yeah. I want to stay in the Humpty room. He passed away. What's the name of the place? It was called the Vista Inn. On Bears? On, I thought it was yeah. a Fairfield. No, it was on, a, it was a on mis- beers on Beer Avenue, Bears Avenue, right there, right by the interstate. Mm. And that's where the that's where Humpty Hump, the guy with the big giant nose, and do the hump to hump. I want to go. My name is Humpty. My name is Humpty. Well, but he's he. That's, I was that's, at a hotel on beers. I did a dump day. Is he the most? Oh. Is he the most famous person to die on Beers it, Avenue? Well, possibly until I die. Anyway, uh, is he the most famous person to die in a hotel in Tampa? Uh, no. I, well, I don't know. Well, why would you just immediately say no? Be- because I, I feel like I've, haven't we covered more? Dr. Paul par- Bear died in the hotel. Did he? Ex- expirations. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Bob oh, yeah. Bob Height from Channel 8 <laughs> died in the uh, Hyatt downtown. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Bob I- Height died at the Hyatt. At <laughs> the Hyatt. Right. Bob, Bob Height's alive and living in North Carolina. All right, so, Roxanne, you were down in Hollywood over the weekend mm-hmm. with apparently a schizophrenic DJ. They only played ten seconds ten of a seconds, song, ten seconds, and almost, then the next song. Yeah, and I almost perished and expired I, in the in the bathroom because you put I, suntan oil on, and then it's like slippery, slippery. I, now, I, it. I don't, I don't want to you know, stir up any issues here, but yeah. if Doug and Roxanne dropped everything to run to Hollywood, yeah, that's that's exactly what we would do. Drop everything. Who, yes. do, you, who do you think was involved? His buddy? <laughs> yes. Who? No, is he? Apparently, he it, was, had, it was the Derek Jeter poker tournament. Bl- Blackjack. They had their big turn two foundation event. They used oh, to so do it's it. a charitable at, event. Yeah, it's a charitable yeah. event. They used to do it at Hard Rock here in the Seminole Hard Rock in Tampa. Huh. And, you know, now he's down there. He lives in in uh, Miami. So this is a lot closer. Wow. And it was nice. That, that hotel down there is beautiful. They redid all the pools and the cabanas oh. and stuff. And they've raised like $40 million over the life of the charity. Oh, that's very, very nice. Who the hell wants to live in Miami? All right, seven fifteen. At yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not really a I mean, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, South Florida kind of guy. Yeah, broke South Florida and rich South Florida, two totally different places. Yeah, good point. Seven fifteen at the MJ Morning Show. Hey, we start an hour and twenty minutes of nonstop MJ coming up. Uh, classic crotchety old man call. Why? Because of today. So we'll explain. Why was my daughter Chloe in the ER? I posted the picture on my Instagram. Over the weekend, uh, certified MJ Radio. See Chloe in an ER hospital bed, all hooked up to wires. Why was Chloe taken to the emergency room? We'll get that story. A whole lot. I mean, I can't even get to all the stuff coming up. But don't move. We start the hour and twenty minutes of nonstop MJ next here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. Two college brothers is your official moving company of the MJ Morning Show, folks. If you are making a move, do not make the wrong move. This is it, folks. This is the time of the year. This is the busy season, spring and summer. If you are planning a move or if you know anyone that's planning a move, friends don't let friends or relatives or coworkers or neighbors hire crappy movers. You know, you might say, yeah, I don't want to get into somebody else's business. I'm telling you right now, they're going to thank you. Tell anyone you know that's planning a move to get a quote from twocollegebrothers.com. Locally owned and operated. People rave about Two College Brothers. The crews, the equipment, the pricing. They'll give you a quote. They'll stick with that number.
7 at the MJ Morning Show. My apologies. I, I really like to start the one hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ no later than 725. So I'm a couple of minutes off here. So please, if you could, if you could find it in your heart to forgive me this morning, I, I would be very uh, highly appreciative of that. All right. So right off the bat, again, uh, I'm full of apologies this morning. We did not get to the name that the teenage girl hates and says that her life is over. So she's a teenager now, and she's just, what, realizing that she feels that her life is over because of what her mother named her. <laughs> All right. I mean, I've heard some crappy names before. Well, welcome to an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop, MJ. Uh, we'll talk to Chloe coming up. Why was Chloe in the ER? Uh, what do I look at, like at 458 at the airport p post office this morning? I'll explain why in just a bit. Hang on. This teenager says she has a white soccer mom or a white grandma name. She wrote on Reddit that she feels like my life is over, bro. Oh, okay. Now I know where you're going. <laughs> How do you know where I'm going? Well, when you said she had a terrible name, I thought it was like, you know, like a null or something like that. The is... teenager, I don't have, I don't have her exact age. It just says a teenager, and she wrote this on Reddit. Who names an Asian kid Sharon? <laughs> oh, come yeah. on. All right, so it's an Asian teenager... Named Sharon. Is that that big of a deal? You know? So, many Asian people who I know have an Americanized name. Oh, yeah. Listen, you've got, you've got Asian Americans that were born in the United States. They're, you know, they're American citizens sure. born here. You know, right. their parents are most likely American citizens. You know, at this point, you've got some second and third generation Asian Americans that have been here for a long, long time. They're just as American as as anyone in this country. So this young Asian girl says, who names an Asian kid Sharon? My life is literally over. People like to compare my name to Karen. <laughs> and online, I see a lot of people say stuff like Sharon and Sharon's and Karen's. Is that a thing? Like a little Sharon's and Karen's? Is that like a pack of them? Is like... Is Sharon the runner-up name to Karen? And I again, I feel so bad for all the Karens out there because there are plenty of nice Karens and they've had their name hijacked by the whole Karening situation. Yeah, the uh, adolescent is unidentified, but she continued to write on Reddit, my parents could have at least made my name look nice by replacing the O with an I, Sharin or Sharon. Or even Sharon, S H E R R I N, would be better. I'm literally a teenage girl with a granny name. I don't think it's a granny name, is it? It's not like Mildred. How am I exactly? How am I supposed to live the rest of my life being named Sharon? <laughs> Does she need to like, call a crisis hotline or something? You could change your name. You know. Yeah, you can. When do you think Sharon was a very popular name? Sure, I would say... The heyday of the Aussie show on MTV. Yeah. But, okay, so maybe like the 60s, late 50s? Yeah, you're, I, in, the, you're 50s, in the hunt. 60s, I, I was 70s. thinking that, too. Yeah. I, I like the name Sharon. I, I I have no issue with the name Sharon. But Sharon was uh, en vogue here in the United States from uh, the 1930s to the 1970s. Yeah, and then I think it probably became unpopular when Sharon Stone was in Basic Instinct because kids didn't or parents didn't want to name their baby Sharon and imagine after like, a crotch exposure. Yes, exactly. <laughs> a, a leg crossing crotch exposure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exposure. No, that's when I named my kid Sharon. <laughs> <Is> that... <laughs> I was like Allison, I got to name this kid Sharon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so this girl says that her life is over because her name is Sharon and she's Asian, and she says there are no Asian Sharons. Uh, and to all the Sharons that are listening, I think your name is just fine. Sharon. <laughs> we I missed that show. Hey, Sharon. Hey, for all of the uh, kids heading to school today, uh, any high school uh, students, uh, 
Yeah, don't try this little stunt out. Oh, boy. Out of Baldwinsville, New York. We pulled a couple of stunts. When well, I was... Only Baldwins would live there. What? <laughs> only the Baldwins oh, would yeah, live that's there. Where, that's where Stephen and Alec. Yeah, well, a, lot of, a lot of a lot of accidental shootings there as well. Ooh. So out of Baldwinsville, New York, listen to this. A student at the local high school arrested sent a fax pretending to be the principal to the administration tendering his resignation. <laughs> so the student at the high school had a problem with the principal, writes a resignation letter, and faxes it to the school administration. The 17-year-old boy created the fake, uh, uh, I guess, uh, an fake email account uh, and sent a fax pretending to be the principal resigning from the school. What's the crime here? Uh, this happened on March 7th. The teen allegedly created two fake school staff email accounts and attempted to get another student in trouble and get personal information about another student. School staff recognized that the email accounts were fraudulent. No other additional information. 13 days later, after the kid had tried to set up some fake emails to get some other kids in trouble... The teen allegedly sent the fax pretending to be the principal. He was caught after police realized the teen put his own cell number on the cover sheet. <laughs> oh, what an idiot. The suspect was arrested, charged with one count of criminal impersonation in the second degree. So I guess he was pissed off at the principal because he had tried some kind of an email scam to get some other kids in trouble. He was caught, found out, then had it in for the principal and then sent a resignation letter to the administration as the principal. So uh, he's been arrested. Uh, he was released into his parents' custody. Got arrested for and that? Yeah, what's the crime here? The case has been re criminal impersonation is the crime. Jeez, it's he a prank. He impersonated the. Well, listen, I'll tell you what. Why don't you be his stuttering defense attorney in court then, okay? Like in My Cousin Vinny. How about that? Love it. Uh, I got women's butt sizes around the world. You know what this, this calls for? Women's. Dang, I'm gonna turn my... Get your right sound effect. Hey, oh. hey, hey I, I got it. I, I need. I had a little bit. I need more. I, guess what time it is, folks? What women's? Women's butt sizes around the world. See how come you won't do my? Well, you know, I can't say wiener, but you what? won't do my thing of those around the world. Froggy <laughs> has a scientific map of of men's sausage sizes <laughs> across the globe, and you're like, no, yeah, no, and we can't do that. We that's can do too butt much. Sizes. That's too much. That's too far. Don't go too far. There is a <laughs> whole new batch of data which has been poured through. Uh, all kinds of data has been analyzed from around the world based on nationality. And it's the size of women's butts around the world that has now been put on a list. Like, you know, what country has technically the biggest butts? So they 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 measured uh, hip sizes. Uh, you ready for the numbers? Mm -hmm. I gotta think ready. the United States is way up there because we have hold, a hold lot on. of hold on. Say it again. The United States, I would think. <laughs> what? No. Really? With all of our no and large what about with, people? Yeah, and the, all the BBLs. With all of the uh, what? All you can eat buffets and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Now, I mean, we have entire states like now, West Virginia. Now, the, I don't think this really has anything to do with the BBL, which is the oh, really? Bra yeah, the Brazilian butt lift. Now, this is natural stuff. Oh, this okay. is not this is not enhanced. How's, okay. your, how's your BBL? You, you went uh, to Mexico for that, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I and, to Mexico. And how long did the infection last? Well, it's, <laughs> that's an MBL. <laughs> my my butt cheeks are now hardened, so it's hard to remember that I, disgusting story I, we read. Yeah, Ro okay. right, Roxanne, you did not have yeah. a Brazilian butt no. lift, right? No, I didn't think so. All right, but here's the data. But I'm not hating on it. I mean, if someone wants to do that, that's great. She had a... Yeah, the average U.S. butt size did not crack <laughs> 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 the top ten. Get it? The, the, yeah. yeah, I yeah. believe as a whole, yeah. as a country, we are a group of large-assed people. All right, guess mm -hmm. which countries? Just take a guess. Who do you think 
is number one or near the top of having the largest butts in the world? Brazilians. You know what? I'm looking at the list here, and Brazil is not in yeah. the top ten. Nope. Okay, and Froggy, I just have to tell you, I Japanese. was I was in South Florida. I saw some Brazilians this weekend, and they're very they're like Giselle. They're they're tall and lanky and hold on, hold not, on. Yeah. Are we talking about big butt like Kardashian style big butt? Mm-hmm. Or are we talking big butt like my Gumar's big butt? <laughs> this, <laughs> Gumar. Right. this is a circumference <laughs> issue. All right, so this is again, this is market research, and this is the the size of the hip circumference. This is how they put the numbers together, and the U.S. is not on the list. Uh, they've learned that hip size uh, can significantly vary depending on age, ethnicity, geographical location. The researchers noted. Okay, you know this song, Sir Mix a Lot, 36, 24, 36, only if she's 5'3. Is that how the lyrics are? We're talking goes? about the, the 36, the lower 36. Okay. Okay. That's that's the measurement that we're speaking of. Yeah. It's it's the the hip measurement is how they're coming up with the butt measurement. So for whatever reason, the list uh, goes to 16 places. And coming in at number 16. Well, we're going to go through all 16. Okay. Well, it's it's quick. It's okay. uh, number sixteen is India, then it's China, Japan at fourteen, South Korea, Nigeria at twelve. The what? 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 I, I, I don't generally think of Asian nations as like the largest asses in the world. Well, I, I definitely think of of America as bigger, right? Like, uh, like with our butts. Generally speaking, I think of. A thinner Asian person, I, for the I, most part. Can I finish with my list? Please. This list of ass fallacies. Go ahead. I, well, I watch your language, man. Which Seriously, one? it's a little Which too one? much. Just, I'm using butts. Just watch okay, your fine. language. I'll do it again. <clears throat> this list of butt fallacies. Thank you. All right, so India 16, then China, then Japan, South Korea, Nigeria 12. The United States comes in at number 11. We didn't crack. Oh. The top 10 for biggest butts in the oh, world. okay. So at least we, we beat those other countries. So okay. the USA at number 11 comes in at 40.2 inches for the hip measurement. Uh, France cracks the top 10 just above the United States at 40.25. Then at number 9, it's Canada. Number 8, the Netherlands. Hmm. Number 7, Australia. Number 6, Russia and Italy are tied, both with 40.55 inches. Number five is Germany. Coming in at number four, it's Greece with 40.74 inches. Sweden. Sweden? This is Sweden? Sweden comes in at 40.94 inches. Number three on the biggest butts in the world list Number two is South American, Roxanne. What do you think it is? Uh, Canada. Who, uh, uh, Argentina. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Whoa, whoa. What did you say? <laughs> Stop you right said there, Canada? Roxanne. I'm sorry, Roxanne. What did you say? South America? I, South America. I said South America. You said oh, that's Canada. North, that's North America. Canada yes. was already named on the list. They're like yeah. number eight. Sorry. Uh, you said Argentina. Argentina. Which is correct, yes. No way. Yeah. Uh, out of all the South American nations, coming in at number two, it's Argentina, biggest butts. Nice. And coming in at number one, we're up to the biggest butt in the whole wide world. Hi, everybody. I'm Casey Kasem, and we're counting down the biggest butts. The biggest butt on the planet is... MJ. <laughs> I don't know. What, where, your butt. Where's the biggest butt? South Africa. Oh, no. I like big butts and I cannot lie. This is the national song there, by the way. This is the national anthem. Sprung! All right. So number one is South Africa. Can I meet you with your research on the most obese countries and see how... Because would you think that big butts and obesity, you would think they might have some overlay or no? I think we're done with it. (laughs) Okay, well, I'm just going to tell you this. Yeah. Most obese countries never heard of any of them. I'm sorry? I've never heard of any of them. You've never heard of the... Well, get no. out of here. Yeah, I swear. You've look, never... Look at these. Hold on. There are countries... Never heard of them. ...on an obese list, and you've yes. never heard of these countries yes. on, on the planet? On the planet. Number right, one, right. never heard of it. What is it? Never heard of it. Nauru. 
N A U R U. Never heard of it. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's a uh, an island. Most obese country. It's an island. Uh, yeah. N A. It's an, U- yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a Pacific island. Yeah. Yeah. Palau. Never heard of that. P A L A U. You never heard of Palau? I've been, what heard of that? I've been scuba diving in Palau. <laughs> Hang on. We'll so so uh, Nauru or Nauru, whatever. That's that's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, it's like north uh, east of like the Solomon Islands, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. All right. So Palau. Okay. Pal- I, come on, have you never heard, heard of it. Palau? Okay, and I've heard of number three, Marshall I, I, Islands. I, I've been scuba diving there. Uh, okay, Marshall yeah. Islands, number three. Yes. Never heard of number four, Tavula. Come on! <laughs> no, I haven't. Ne- Ta- ne- ne- how how could you never have heard of These that? These are popular countries. I, I have heard of Tonga, number five. Number six. T- Tavula is like, it, it's it's also a, P- a Pacific Oceania. Okay. Oh, what do they call it? They call that like Oceana, I think. Okay. Is that, that region of the yeah. Pacific. Number six. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I have heard of Samoa, and did I know you, they're known fa- for their Girl Scout did, cookies. Hold on. Did, did you fail geography? I I do not have a good sense of direction, no. Are, are and the, I know American geography, but not really outside of the- Hold on. Are these uh, the fattest countries in the world or the yes. fattest countries in like the Southern Pacific? No. Fattest, most obese countries. Because U.S. N- came in at number 10. But I've never heard of Kerbati. Have you heard of Kerbati? That one I have not heard of. Kerbati? Number seven. And then number We're, eight, Federated- Oh, oh, oh hold on. Uh, you're going to say Federated States of Micronesia. Yeah, never heard of that. Yeah, well, I, I went scuba diving there okay. as well because that's where Truck Lagoon is. Uh, Federated uh, States of Micronesia uh, is a whew, great diving destination. So again, it's it, again in yeah, the middle not, of the Pacific sounds Ocean. Sounds like these are countries that only divers know about. Yeah, the the other the other place you just her uh, body. Yeah, that's also in that Oceana okay. area yeah. of the Pacific. Yeah, I right, I, I got to move on here. I, I have uh, a classic crotchety man, uh, uh, old man call. I want to play uh, that has to do with today. Today is. April 15th, this is tax day for, I think, most of the country. I think there are a couple of states. Andrew, I think you mentioned this earlier. So this is the 15th of April. This is income tax filing day or extension day. Did you say there were a couple of states, Andrew, that uh, are you on the air with that or just in my ear? All right. Just go on the air. You're a producer. You can talk on the mic. What Maine and Massachusetts are ce- celebrating Patriots Day today. Great. Yeah, so it's a holiday today in those states. Okay, so I guess you get the file tomorrow in Maine and Massachusetts. Wednesday. But, uh, I'm sorry, Wednesday. It's a two-day event. I, what? I don't know. But uh, here in Florida and elsewhere around the country, you've got to pay the IRS today if you owe them. Now, oh, I'm going to file an extension What is what you said. No, uh, you can file an extension. But, see, this is a misnomer. A lot of people are misled. And this is going to lead into a classic crotchety old man call. If you owe the IRS money, you have to pay them today. You don't have to file your return today. You can file an extension, but you have to send in your payment with the extension. Or else they're going to hit you with interest and penalties. And I don't think you want interest and penalties all jammed up on you. So... Would you like to see me, folks, at the airport post office at 4.58 this morning? Yeah, I meant to get there over the weekend, but we Chloe was in the ER on Saturday. If you follow my Instagram, Certified MJ Radio, you saw the picture I talk of Chloe in the ER, uh, in the hospital bed, the, the monitor screen right behind her, all the tubes, IVs, all that stuff. Why was Chloe... In the ER. Why was she rushed to the ER on Saturday? We'll explain in just a bit. Anyway, my weekend got a little discombobulated. I wanted to send in my tax crap over the weekend, uh, but I didn't. So instead of going later today when, you know, the post office is going to be jammed, I say, you know what? I'm just going to get up earlier than usual on a Monday morning, which I did, popped out of bed, and I went to the post office and I stopped at the airport 24-hour post office, uh, and I use the kiosk. There's no reason to go to the counter. And the counter is closed. Remember, the po- it used to be open 24 hours. There was a time. A 24-hour post office. There was a time when the airport post office was literally open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Like, holidays, it was crazy. You could go there at 3 in the morning on, like, uh, like, like 
I think Christmas or something. They were there. I, maybe they were closed on Christmas. Well, yeah. I, but most times, three o'clock in the morning, you can go to the counter at the air. Now they, I think they close overnight. They're 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 eight a.m. to ten p.m. Okay, so they don't do the twenty-four hour thing anymore. Still but pretty late. but the lobby area with all of the do-it-yourself self-service machines that's open. That's all I needed. So I found myself at the airport post office at four fifty-eight this morning, mailing. Uh, two priority mail envelopes to the IRS in Charlotte, North Carolina, because I, I had money due with my extension, and then also they uh, whack you also with uh, April 15th being an estimated payment date. So I had to send the IRS two freaking checks today, so I'm not, not happy. So what, what, do I, what do I look like at 4.58 in the morning? Take a look. I, I snapped a picture of myself. I did a selfie right in front of the mail slots and the do-it-yourself automated machine holding up my letters to the IRS. And I'm... Uh, you got a big fat tongue, dude. Yeah, I, I stuck my tongue out at the, at the IRS. So if you want to see that image, it's on my Instagram right now. It's not I, the wrong, my tongue's not fat. All right, MJ, I got to say, yeah, well, right. I, I could not tell for the first five or six times I looked at this picture. I had to actually expand it on my phone. <laughs> yeah. If you were sticking your tongue out or you had a fat lip, a fat lip that you were kind of <laughs> curling down. I was busted. Yeah. I was I, busted in the face. I yeah. got into a bar fight. I'm like, big fat lip. I'm like, I can't figure out who you look like with that new haircut. Like, like somebody, I don't, dude, I just got a haircut yesterday. It's, no, it's, it's not a new haircut. It's one of the Muppets or something. It's, oh, I got I, my, my hair. And you can also see my new shorter haircut. It's probably as short as uh, I've had my hair in quite some time. Anyway, the image is up. On my Instagram at Certified MJ Radio, me and the post office at 458 this morning. With that said, a classic crotchety old man call, which only makes sense on tax day, only makes sense on April 15th. Then we'll try to call Chloe and talk about her ER issue. Hmm. And she'll disclose what she wants to disclose. I don't want to, you know, speak out of turn. It's it's. Her information to either reveal or not reveal. Well, hold on. If she's as to s- as to why she was in the ER, is she going to reveal something? Because if it's like I don't want to talk well, about I, it, yeah, I, I guess, don't really. I guess we'll find out right after the classic IRS crotchety old man call. Welcome to the Internal Revenue Service. Please listen to the following seven topics. Press the number given when you hear your topic. If you have a personal income tax question or are preparing a personal income tax return... I want a stinking agent! Get me a human being! Get me a stinking freaking agent! What kind of friendlier IRS is this anyway? Hello? This is Cindy. Yes. Okay, what can I do for you? Yes, I'm elderly. What do you need to know? Yes, hello, is this the agent? Yes, it is. Yes! My name is Milton Fludgecow. I have a very violent temper towards the IRS. Uh-huh. I was actually jailed for some time in the early 1960s for ramming an IRS agent with my vehicle and pushing him through the window of a department store. Just a minute, sir, and I will let you talk to my boss. Okay. Yes, may I help you? I need to go over a few deductions that I think we may have missed. First of all, my boy Chauncey, he's nearly 600 pounds, and last year he ate approximately, according to the receipts from the grocery, 307 pounds of pork chops. What is my deduction for that? You can't deduct for eating food. Why not? I'm I'm 74 years old, and I think I did that for numerous years. Well, you can't deduct it. No, pork chops are not deductible. Okay. Um, I accidentally cut off two fingers with a bandsaw while I was making a birdhouse in my garage for my daughter Estelle. And I think I read somewhere in the tax code that missing digits were a deduction. Is that true? No. 
Okay, how about the lubrication oil for my Craftmatic adjustable bed because I have a medical condition? Okay. No. Well, that's not very good either, so that's three strikes now for deductions. Um, how about my Miracle Ear hearing aid? I was told I have hearing loss. I was told that I can deduct my Miracle Ear and all of the 79 batteries that I used during 1997. Yes. What? Yes. I'm sorry. Speak up a little louder. Yes, you can. Can what? Deduct the batteries. What? You can deduct the batteries. For the hearing aid, can I deduct my batteries? You can deduct the battery for the hearing aid. The batteries cost a total of $196, but I want to claim 8000 Is that out of the question? Yes, that's out of the question. Will I get... Can't o- deduct it. Will I get audited? Yes, you will. What? Yes, you will. Okay, last item. I have a very serious human methane lower intestinal diffusional problem. What is the deduction for that? Well... Um, that, I don't, did you, are you going to the doctor for that problem? Yes, I am. Well, the doctor bills for that problem then. Are they all deductible? They're deductible if you paid for them. Did Medicare pay for them? I can't remember. I think can't I, remember? I think I put them on my visa card. You put them on your visa card? Yes, I believe so. Well, do you have your Visa card statement? I just want to know, quit running me in circles, is my human methane lower intestinal diffusional problem covered by my tax deduction? Only what you paid. And I can deduct it all? If you paid it. <laughs> you are being a nasty IRS bitch lady. Hello? Hello, why'd you hang up on me? Hello? Can I point something out that Froggy did not laugh until the fart noises came up? <laughs> they're so, they're so yeah. short, they're funny. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little... little. <laughs> I was laughing, yeah. but the farts really brought it well, home. I wasn't looking at you, but I, I heard you. Once Once the fart noises hit, that's when Froggy started laughing. Mm-hmm. That was funny. It's very, very, very simple tastes over here with Froggy. I'm a simple man. <laughs> All right. 755 at the MJ Morning Show. That means that we are five minutes away from the uh, Cash Kitty. Cash Kitty, the next keyword for you to text or enter online or on the app will happen in five minutes or thereabouts. So stand by. You're shot to win $1,000 with the Cash Kitty. This is the first one today. And, hey, it's it's tax day. So have, if you're sending the IRS money, maybe you can get some money back from uh, Q105 here and the MJ Morning Show. So 8 o'clock, we're minutes away from the first 1000 uh, bucks. Then 10 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., and 5 p.m. Let's call Chloe. A lot of people. Oh, you did you see how many comments were left on the Chloe picture? So Chloe uh, at the ER on Saturday, uh, her I guess it's boyfriend took her because Michelle and I were in the middle of something and we couldn't drop immediately. So Chloe's boyfriend uh, took her to the emergency room. And there's a picture on my Instagram. Again, you, you never know what the hell's going to pop up on my Instagram. Like uh, me in the post office at 4.58 this morning, sticking my tongue out at the IRS. Or, uh, you know, Chloe in the ER. You can look at her face. It's on my Instagram. Certified MJ Radio if you want to take a look. And you can see that Chloe's in pain. We were worried. We thought, like, her appendix burst. That's what I thought. We thought maybe, like, her, her gallbladder exploded or something or... She somehow got got a hold of those uh, white castles that festerate on Friday's show. <laughs> wow. Which, by the way, folks, unbelievably, the White Castle frozen burgers that Froggy bought a week ago, last Monday, they fell out of his bag in the backseat of his F-150 from Veterans Ford. <laughs> Froggy found them on Friday morning under the Hal Herman jacket that he wore during the Hell Herman performance. He brings him into the studio at 6 a.m. on Friday morning. 
Fester opens the box and eats all four of the White Castle frozen burgers that were in the back of Froggy's truck since last Monday. Iron gut. And Fester said he did not get ill at all. No, no, no. Nothing. No, 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 no. no. Thank you. Thank you, Alec Baldwin. No, 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 no. Good for you. Uh, let me call Thanks. Chloe and right. see what she wants to. You know, what, what, what she had is pretty common, actually. But, again, you initially, you don't know exactly what it was. Uh, good morning, my Princess Chloe. Hi. How you feeling? Not good. Oh, you're, oh, you're not good this morning? No. You were fairly good yesterday and last night. I know. I just woke up in a lot of pain. Oh, man. You know what? Because what, when's the last time you took a pill? Sometime last night. Uh, yeah, you probably did. You What are you supposed to take now, the Toradol or the uh, the Vicodin? I just took a Vicodin. All right. Careful with those things. Yeah, yeah she'll be hooked up and she'll be what? She'll be dependent on them. She'll oh, be hey, buying them from those street things, dealers in a couple of weeks. These are strong. Just saying. Uh, uh, Chloe, do you want to uh, listen? A lot of people concerned. And I, I can't believe the number of comments that our listeners left. The picture of Chloe in the ER at St. Joseph's. By the way, that was a, a very good experience. Uh, the ER doctor was Dr. Matt Howell. Right, Chloe? Yeah, he was great. Yeah, Dr. Matt Howell, the ER doc at St. Joe's, was really, really good. And then you had two nurses and I think it was, what, Amy and Marissa, right? Yeah, they were also amazing. Yeah, I mean, it was a really, really good experience at St. Joe's. It was, yeah, it's a great hospital. You know, uh, Saturday afternoon, you know, like 1, 2 o'clock, it, it wasn't that busy. And it was just, it was like, it's kind of a breeze. It was a, a very pleasant ER experience where a lot of time, I mean, listen, if there's no ER experience that's like, you know, fun and games, but, you know, it, it was more pleasant than I think the typical ER experience. So, Chloe, I'm looking at, this is unbelievable. The, the number of comments, there are 263 comments on Chloe's image, which is on my Instagram right now. Uh, certified MJ Radio is my Instagram. That's Certified MJ Radio. And uh, listen, don't don't say, oh, MJ, now you're resorting to get Instagram hits and, and follows. You're putting your daughter uh, a picture of her uh, yeah. in, in the bed in the ER. That's what I thought. Uh, listen, <laughs> <laughs> we staged it. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, we went to we went to St. Joe's and said, hey, can we just borrow a an ER hospital bed for just a couple? Of, we just want to take a selfie, if you don't mind, Chloe. It's not that it's staged. I mean, I'm looking at you, and obviously you're in discomfort. No, she's in pain. But your father's like. Chloe in the ER story Monday morning on the MJ Morning Show. Listen, I did, I did kind of tease it, all right? Yeah, I mean, so, and that's what people are saying. Oh, your kid's sick and you're using it for show prep. Uh, <laughs> Chloe in the ER, the story Monday morning on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. I mean, listen, that's a good promo, isn't it? I am reading the checklist for Munchausen syndrome, and uh, the first question <laughs> is, do you post pictures of your child when they're in the ER? <laughs> no, it's not. There's no Munchausen by proxy so. checklist. <laughs> Uh, oh, by the way, hey, Chloe, hold on a sec. It's 8.01. Let me give out the cash kitty word here. This hour's word is honor. That's H-O-N-O-R. This hour's word is honor. Text honor nationwide to 45911 before 8.15, before quarter after, for a shot at $1,000 cash. Or you can enter it on the MyQ105 app. That's Q105 app or at MyQ105.com. The word is honor. Good luck on the thousand bucks right now from the MJ Morning Show in Q105 and the Cash Kitty. And then the next chances at a thousand bucks today are at 10 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., and 5 p.m. So, Chloe, uh, before we move on, I don't want to keep you too long. Do you want to reveal? I mean, what you have and what sent you to the ER is very common. Hemorrhoids? Yeah. Uh, do you want to, it's Frog, it's not I mean, hemorrhoids. Well, hemorrhoids. I'm trying to take a guess. I mean, hemorrhoids are common. So far, you've you given said us common. no clues. She's dis, She's in great com discomfort. I think they're common at that age, too. Yeah, so it's this age, Chloe is 22, and this age during, uh, you know, you know, prime, listen, at 22, uh, you know, prime fertility, prime, you know, 
childbearing age, you know, 22. You know, I don't want to see Chloe have a baby. She's too young. But, you know, this is kind of the prime fertility uh, zone. But uh, but listen, here here's, a, you know, Chloe at 22, she'd be an old, like, weathered sea hag like in Game of Thrones at this point. You know, it, seriously, at 22, she'd be an old hag. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's all done if she was, like, in Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon. Mm. All right, so, Chloe, uh, do you want to reveal what you had since it's so common? Sure. Um, so it turned out to be a ruptured ovarian cyst. Um, oh. I had no idea that it was there, that I had had it. So it kind of just came as a surprise. I mean, like when I came in and they saw me, you know, doubled over, um, they were kind of throwing out a, like a, a, a bunch of different things, obviously appendicitis, um, the cyst. They even thought it was maybe like a really bad stomach bug, but um, they did some tests. I got a CT scan, and it turned out to be an ovarian cyst that ruptured. Yeah, somebody even said, hey, would she eat your cacio e pepe that you made oh, on yeah. Friday night? Everybody's a comic. Yeah, everyone's a comic. <laughs> I, I, I made the most amazing cacio e pepe on uh, Friday night, and I posted that on Instagram as well. No, she didn't get food poisoning from one of my dishes, folks. Well, no, obviously not food poisoning, uh, but it ruptured her ovary. No, it did. <laughs> what, what, no, what, what, no, what did you have? It, no, her ovary is fine. It's it's an ovarian <laughs> cyst. Okay, I know nothing about that department. So, her Chloe, ovary. what is that, Chloe? Oh God, I don't know. That's not my department. Ovary? What an ovary? No, is? But, but what is a so doesn't have to do a, with the eggs and the ovaries. I know where the eggs come from. Eggs and the ovaries, yeah. I know what the ovaries so. are, and I know what that boulevard is called that they go down to the chute. But, fallopian uh, tube. Uh, yeah, the, the fallopian the tube. Yeah, it's a fallopian yeah. tube. I, yeah. had, I had a friend up in New York, his last name was fallopian. I, I no, mean, you didn't. Is. Yeah, I did, Mr. Fallopian. Anyway, listen. That's but, unfortunate. But what is a... You, you, are cysts... Cysts, is that how you say it? Cysts. Yeah, it's, it's very, this is gross. Are cysts common? Yes, it's very common, it's, especially at that age, yeah, because ex- you're very fertile. It's extremely common, happens a lot, and we thought that her appendix had burst and that she was going to be... We th- I, When we heard what was going on, we thought that she was going to be like rolled into surgery uh, for something, and it turns out that it was just a burst ovarian cyst. It resolves itself, yeah. you know, within a week or so, mm-hmm. and uh, you know the the pain should be. And you want to hear something crazy? Chloe sat for the LSAT on Friday morning. So Chloe did the LSAT. Can you imagine, Chloe, if this would have hit you in the middle of the LSAT on Friday? Yeah, and I was already in so much pain on Friday. I've been having... See, I knew something was kind of wrong, honestly, like Tuesday and Wednesday of last week, um, but I was kind of just taking medicine for it. Um, okay, yeah. I was taking some Advil. Good. And so Friday morning, I woke up with a really, really, really bad pain, and I was like, I, this cannot happen right now, not for at least the next five hours. So I took some medicine and went in and took the test and then kind of came home and lied in bed the rest of the day. Yeah, and, and- then- and, the, and then the ER on Saturday. Anyway, Chloe, I'm glad you're alive. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you pulled through this. You gave Mom and I a scare because we were not with you when it happened. And thanks to your boyfriend, Chet, for bringing you to the ER. <laughs> Chet? Uh, His name's Chet? I mean, so, oh, I thought you were serious. No, I'm, I'm joking. That's the other. How did Chet call you and break the news to you? Uh, yeah, uh, Dad? Uh, no. Yeah, so this is, this is Chet. Uh, hey, uh, uh, yeah, Chloe's ovaries are all messed up, and I don't know what's going down. Yeah, so, uh, 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 Dad, I, I, can I talk to you about your daughter's ovaries, uh, Dad? It, it, listen, if, if you want to... If you want to see the picture of Chloe in the ER at St. Joe's on Saturday afternoon, it's on my Instagram at Certified MJ Radio. And Chloe's reading all the comments. If you'd like to leave a comment for Chloe, Certified MJ Radio on Instagram. I and- have I have some information for you, Chloe. Um, so what, when I was, what's when your I was- information? <laughs> Chet wants to know. When I was your age, I had the exact same thing happen. Went to the ER and everything. Oh. Then when I started to have my kids, I had um, some, you know, they did some tests and there were some cysts there. And they said, we're going to have to remove them unless they just go away on their own. Because every month they come and go. So it's a very normal thing. But they told me something interesting. Tylenol encourages cyst growth on ovaries. I so, saw that on the bottle. Oh, wow. So, yes. so oh. I cut Tylenol out from my, like, I take it sparingly. And also you can put, like packs of castor oil on your lower abdomen and that's supposed to be good too do you know the song by night okay. ranger 
Sister Christian, you're <laughs> the only one. Uh, it's about a, about a cyst. That was, that's what, that's what Chet was playing on the radio as he's taking her to the hospital. Sister Christian. Uh, Chloe, I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad you're feeling better, but you're in a little pain now. So go pop your Vicodin in and, and try not to get hooked on, on a scheduled drug, yeah. okay? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Roxanne, for that information. Uh, and also, thank you so much, everyone, for all of the comments. It means a lot. You're welcome. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Hi, right, Chloe. <laughs> Alrighty, bye everyone. Uh, bye. Feel better. The, scared the crap out of us. Uh, what, what do you? I imagine, uh, how, uh, I imagine how scared Chet was <laughs> giving you a call about your daughter's ovaries. You know, Dad, listen, I offered to take a look, but yeah. she said no, man. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I got to take her to the doctor, dude. Had my speculum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. She, so she's okay, right? Yeah. Does that have listen, any long term ramifications? She's in discomfort, but it's just uh, it. The fluid is what causes the pain, and that just gets absorbed, and it goes away. It it will resolve itself, hopefully, this week, and she'll be back to it. Listen, Chloe's a very fit athlete. I mean, she was, you know, an NCAA, you know, Division One soccer player. This doesn't know, have college. to do with being unhealthy. Or yeah. No, 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 There's but I'm like saying that. that she's fit. Yeah, and, that's what I mean. You know, and so that nothing she, to worry about. I, you know, she should bounce back, you know, See, pretty quickly. I am unfit, and I once had a cyst on my back, <laughs> and it was <laughs> disgusting when it popped. All right, now. At 8.08, ladies and gentlemen, we have to discuss celebrity kids gone bad. Have you seen, I don't know what it is, recently, the kids of celebrities are getting in some serious freaking trouble. Like Tom Hanks' kid, what's his name? He has one kid that he, it's almost written off from the family, right? Yeah. I think his so. name's Chet. Is it, I think, is I it, think Chet? it is. No, it's I think not it's Chet Hanks. I think it might be Chet Hanks. Oh, look it up. He oh, has a Jamaican shit. accent. No. No, it, this has nothing to do with Tom Hanks. It is Chet Hanks. <laughs> he has oh, like, my God. Tom Hanks has like a totally tatted out anti-establishment kid. I don't know the details on him. His name is Chet. And he speaks Jamaican and he, and he, accent. He, Come on. He, he yeah, he does that. It. He works at the the Jerk Hut. The, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, He's like a Jamaican rapper yeah. or something. Jerk Hut told me, get the hell out. I got to get to the jerk hut again. It's been yeah. a while. I mean, yeah. you know, not every day they name restaurants after now, listen, you. Listen, <laughs> the jerk hut's a good place. All right, so I got a couple of celebrity kids that are in the news. Did you see that Winona Judd's daughter, Grace, has been hit with prostitution charges? She was waving a sign that read, Ride for a Ride. While naked on an Alabama highway, what the? Do you, do you understand? Ride for a ride? Like she'll ride you. What? She'll, she'll give, her give a you a ride if you give her a ride. It's one of the three ways to pay. Oh my yeah. God! The daughter of country music legend Winona Judd. What's her name? Her name is Grace Check. Kelly. Grace Kelly. Yes. I gotta see what she looks like. This is <laughs> nuts. So. She, I mean, you can't make this crap up. Winona Judd's daughter. Oh, my God. She's like a princess of Monaco. Okay. No, it's not no, that it's, great. It's no, not it's not that. that no, no. Oh. It's not that great. I was going to say, she's, she's lovely. Not, Keep that, searching that, for Grace Kelly that, results. Yeah, not that the Grace first Kelly's not alive. <laughs> oh. Yeah, search car accident, Grace Kelly. I was going to say. Right, so, Grace Pauline Kelly, 27-year-old troubled daughter of Winona Judd, was arrested for flashing her breasts on the side of a busy Alabama highway while holding up a ride for a ride sign. Oh! <laughs> she's bunk! All right. Froggy, calm all right, down. Listen, well, for her to offer a ride to somebody, I mean, yeah, her mug, she's not cute. She Well, listen. She's mug, very juddy. Mug <laughs> shots are not uh, what you should be judging people by. But she does have a dope... Eyebrow tattoo? I know. Is that what, what that is? That? Yeah. She has a name. Oh, she's a little bad there. She, she looks a lot like her mama. Yeah. She was picked up for exposing herself at the intersection or the area of Interstate 65 and Highway 14 in Millbrook, Alabama, initially charged with indecent exposure and obstructing governmental operations, but then authorities hit her with soliciting prostitution because she had a sign saying she'll give you a ride if you give her a ride. <laughs> what? <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyway, she's had a history of drug problems. You know, so many of these celebrity kids just have problems. I guess it's growing up in the shadows of your, you know, like, listen, 
Uh, Chloe's all freaked up on Vicodin now. Yeah, Look right at this, yeah. you know. <laughs> you want to talk about somebody who casts a large shadow? Uh, it's Winona. Uh, she's enormous. Fester, they just lost their mind. Come on, her sister. Which one of them shot himself? Her mom. Oh, all right. Where, where, where's this going? Well, she killed herself. I was trying to make a fat joke, and you're talking about the old lady. I'm so tired of you. Anyway, <laughs> I hate you. So the tension between Froggy and Fester, ladies and, and it's gentlemen, it's just too many years. Yeah, it's, it's the, too much. It's an unbreakable love. Yeah. Uh, but listen, but this daughter has everything going for her. You would think. Well, you know, but just like MJ said, you grow up in the shadow of your parent. You're never going to be as big as them. You can never pass surpass what they've done. And then you have access to everything, so you don't develop like other people do, where you have to negotiate for things and work for things. Oh, she's pretty good at negotiation. She was trading <laughs> rides for a rides. A ride <laughs> for a ride. Yeah, right next to the boiled peanut <laughs> stand on some road in the back of Alabama. She's, she was developing you know her what? negotiation skills. I give her a couple of points for creativity on that sign, actually. Yeah. yeah. You know, to be quite honest. Yeah, but so she's in trouble. And then Cindy Lauper's kid uh, faces, uh, uh, I guess, problems and issues. Uh, I guess. Psoriasis. What? Oh, 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 oh she, what, what are the commercials that Cindy Lauper Sor- does? Psoriasis. I forget what the drug is. Yeah, the drug. Psoriasis. Cosentix. Yeah, yeah, psoriasis. Co- is it Cosentix? I don't know. I'll have to look it up. It sounds right. Girls just want to have psoriasis. <laughs> oh, no, sure. Girls just want to have flaky yeah. skin. <laughs> so Cindy Lauper's troubled son. What, what is all these celebrities with troubled kids? Uh, they might throw him out of his apartment, uh, his Manhattan apartment, because they say that he's the neighbor from hell, mm. that he thumps music, rattling the wa- walls late at night. So boys just want to have fun. He screams at the top of his lungs late at night in his apartment. And the weed stench coming out of his apartment. According he screams in the middle yeah, of the yeah, night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's he, ah, he, he night, night terrors. He, he, he plays, just wakes up. He, ah! he, he plays ridiculously loud music. I think a she bop and the all through the night. <laughs> And the true, true, oh. I think he blasts true colors <laughs> all night. I see your true colors shining through. So the neighbors have had it with him. So the, the, he might get evicted. His name is Declan Lauper Thornton, and he goes by Dex. Probably De- Declan. I bet it's Declan. Uh, I've D E C L Y N. I've always heard Declan. Declan. Yeah. yeah I don't know where you're getting Declan from, but uh, it's Declan. Uh, so the landlord has, uh, I guess, filed an eviction petition to try to get the 26-year-old uh, rapper out of his $7,200 a month apartment in a uh, New York City high-rise. It's down in the Five Die, which is the financial district. This is according to a New York County civil court filing. So they're trying to evict him. Uh, Lauper Thornton, the only son of Cindy Lauper. And her Law and Order TV actor hubby, David Thornton. I didn't know that. Which Law and Order? I mean, there were 19 Law and Orders. Which Which Law and Order was uh, Cindy Lauper's husband on? I have no. I have no idea who he is. Yeah, and they're saying that uh, Cindy Lauper's son has violated uh, a whole slew of rules and regulations that are in the lease since he moved into this. Uh, they say it's a very fancy schmancy posh building. And he moved into a one-bedroom. It's got phenomenal views of Lower Manhattan and the Hudson World Trade uh, Center area, the Statue of Liberty. And he apparently loves screaming at it in the middle of the night. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, Listen to this. I never had any problems with any of the neighbors before. A former neighbor told the New York Post. Then a new tenant moved in, and immediately there was very loud music at the most bizarre times, like 3 a.m. or 7 a.m. It felt like there was a nightclub behind my wall. Damn. Uh, It's 19 Dutch Street in Lower Manhattan in the uh, financial district. And the landlord has filed an eviction notice against Cindy Lauper's kid. Again, I had no idea. Uh, a source added that uh, the day after a tenant confronted Cindy Lauper's kid about a wild recent night, 
the former neighbor found a bullet in the hallway near his apartment. It's not my bullet. <laughs> I know that Cindy Lauper had a bunch of songs that were number one with a bullet, but it seems that Cindy Lauper's kid put like a bullet in the hallway outside of the the complaining tenant's apartment is kind of a like a threat. Damn. Is that Pretty unbelievable? Crazy. Not cool. No. I see your two colors shining through. Does she have a clip pal or something? Who? Why are you making her sound like that? She doesn't go, I see your two colors. Did you ever hear the parody song of Elmer Fudd doing true colors? Oh, that's what you're doing. Yeah. I've that's, never heard that. you never heard that? i got to find that. I see your it's two funny. colors oh, shining through. <laughs> Elmer. Anyway, celebrity kids gone bad. I got more celebrity crap coming up a little later. Man, there is one lucky as hell Hillsborough County deputy sheriff. Did you see that he caught the bullet in his microphone for his uh, radio that was up on his uh, chest area? Wow. Unbelievable. At the park? Yeah. Yeah, I saw the This is up in your... Oh, no, uh, this is Carrollwood. I was thinking... Yeah, this is Carrollwood, right? You know Carrollwood up to no good. (laughs) Oh, that's true. Uh, This is Andrew's uh, area, or Andrew's closest to this. Carrollwood's no town and country, but... uh... Stories like this is catching up. Yeah, Froggy's in town in Compton, right? I'm the king of Com- town yeah. in Compton. Look at that. Catch of the county. And this is a mm. this is <laughs> unbelievable. The luck here, uh, wow. So Hillsborough County deputy sheriffs, they had a deal with uh, a guy that's well known as, you know, being kind of problematic. This guy has a, a dog which has been known to be very aggressive. I guess he walks around town in or um, uh, Carrollwood, this area. He spends time in the park. He was not supposed to be in the park. A I cor- hate it when I see dogs with homeless people. According to the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, about 10 a.m. yesterday morning, Sunday morning, they were patrolling the Beacon Meadows Park area. This is right off a of gun highway. So it's considered Carrollwood. It's off a of gun highway. And they saw 32-year-old Anthony Carpenter. And he had been previously given a trespass notice for his activity and his behavior in the park on Saturday. So the day before, on Saturday, Hillsborough County deputy sheriffs, they trespassed him and said, you can't come to the park. He's back in the park on Sunday morning with a trespass warning. They tried to get him to leave. So initially, like, you got to leave the park. And that's when the guy gets uh, belligerent. Uh Uh-oh. He said that uh, he feared for his life. He thought he was going to get hurt. He He didn't commit a crime, but he was afraid. Well, he was trespassing. That is a crime. So they're trying to get him just to voluntarily leave. Well, this whole thing devolved pretty quickly. And, again, a lot of people know this guy in the area. Apparently, he's kind of a nuisance. They say that his dog, uh, I guess, has snapped at people, and the dog can be very aggressive. And the deputies and the body cams were rolling. The deputies with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, uh, who do a remarkable job, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, one of the best law enforcement agencies in the entire country, they spent 25 patient minutes trying to de-escalate and just get the guy to leave. 25 minutes. If this was Philly, they would have whacked him over the head with a nightstick within the first uh, you know, 10 yeah. seconds. All right? So the Hillsborough County deputy sheriffs take 25 minutes, and he's refusing commands. They're saying, show us your hands. He's putting his hands in his, his pockets, in his like sweatshirt hoodie kind of thing, or his jacket pockets. Uh, and and he he would not leave the park. So the deputies, they call for Hillsborough County Animal T- Control to come out to take custody of the dog because they got to take him into, uh, you know, into custody. He he will not comply with the orders to leave. So he won't comply. The animal control officer shows up. And finally, uh, th- he won't take his hands out of his pocket. They have to deploy the tasers. And the first round of the taser was ineffective because it looked like it was shot at his back. 
And sometimes and if they're wearing that hoodie or a thick it, material, it, it, it yeah, doesn't... He's, he's wearing a jacket. Yeah. And it, it just didn't penetrate the jacket. So it just didn't have any effect on him with the first round of uh, the tasering. And then uh, one of the other officers, uh, I guess, tased him in the front so in an open area where his jacket was not covering. So he was finally hit with a taser, and then you see him go down like a rock. But, man, he was fighting the tasers. And you can even hear, I'm going to play the audio from the body cams, and you can hear the officers, you know, when they deploy, they're, they're trained to say, taser, 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 uh, to let everyone else at the scene know that a taser is about to be deployed, as well as, I guess, the perp himself. And you can hear the zapping and the first round of the taser just, it didn't do anything. We don't want to hurt you no, and we don't want to get hurt. No, but you want to hurt me. Don't be stupid and you, you won't get hurt. hurt me, you Simple didn't. directions. You would have asked me to leave lawfully. You wouldn't be over here trying to thump in your chest. So you clearly want to hurt me. So that's what it's going to be, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm in fear for my life. I'm literally We've had the right to one taser already. We've already had the right to pepper spray. So, we could have done no, this. you don't. We you literally don't have the right to be here harassing you. Right now. Man. Stop reaching in your pockets. You're getting out of your pockets. I mean, these deputies with HCSO could not be more patient with this guy. And then his hands are in his pockets. That's a dangerous situation because they don't know what he has. And it turns out he had a gun and shot one of the deputies. Oh, God. But where the bullet went is miraculous. Stop I'm reaching my pocket. Dog, man. And I'm not going to jail. You're making us concerned for our safety. Stop reaching in your pocket. I'm not being arrested. I'll be right you're there. Gonna, you're going to have to kill me today. We don't want to kill you. We don't want to hurt you no, or your no, dog. No, that's what it's going to be. Y'all are We don't tyrants. want you. You guys are f***ing tyrants, man. So here comes the taser. Put your hands out of your I'm pocket. No crime. Taser, 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 taser. Please stop. Please stop. Hands out of your Please pocket. No Hands out of your Please pocket. Stop. Please stop. Get, get him on the front. Taser. Taser. Stop. I've got enough crying. Ow. Mother. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> See, hands out of your pocket. No. Hold it down. All right. And then. Hands out of your pocket. All right. Finally. He gets a taser shot to the front, apparently, uh, you know, without the jacket obstructing, and he drop. He just falls over, drops yeah. like a like a log, and is on the ground. But then this is where it gets dangerous. Turns out he had a a I think it was a thirty eight caliber revolver in his pocket and shoots the Hillsborough County deputy. Ah! How did I get hit? Mm, something to hit me. Get out of the way, Mark. So the officer that says, how did I get hit? So that guy squeezed off three shots? Yeah. Wow. So Deputy Kerr Craig, uh, C-R-A-I-G-E, if I'm pronouncing it properly, 33-year-old deputy, the bullet hit his microphone for his uh, police radio, which was up on his shoulder area. The bullet went in, the microphone took the bullet. Is that wow. unbelievable? Did they shoot that guy? No. Did they, they, what no, happened to the guy? They didn't return they, fire. They did not. What? They did not. I mean, totally justified. Absolutely justified. Oh, my God. Oh, I watch yeah. a lot of cop videos. Yeah. That doesn't happen. I mean, yeah. they should have blown that guy up. Totally justified. <laughs> they they could have lit this guy up. Uh, this guy Carpenter is the individual. So now he goes away for like ever. Oh, oh, right? this, this, yeah. this dude. Wait till you hear this guy's hit with all kinds of crap. Thirty-two year old Anthony Carpenter uh, has been charged with resisting an officer with violence, armed trespass, and three counts of attempted first degree murder. Of a law enforcement officer. Ooh, he's done. Uh, today's situation could have ended in tragedy. Thankfully, our deputy narrowly escaped serious injury despite the careless actions of the suspect. A uh, statement put out by Sheriff Chad Cronister. Not only was the deputy's life in danger today, but the lives of those around him were also at risk. 
Because he's firing shots. I can't, I'm still in shock they didn't shoot that guy. That's I mean, crazy. You think it's a park? There might be children within a couple of hundred yards of this? You know Maybe. what? I need to get a taser. When you say like uh, crazy things on the show, I need to tase you. You'll hear, taser, taser, taser. Uh, and I'll, I'll fire one. I at, laugh off tasers. And frog <laughs> bring out a taser. Yeah. You know, but I'll, that is unbelievable. He's a lucky man. Uh, listen, again, thanks to Hillsborough County. Uh, deputy sheriffs and you know all law enforcement who they never know what they're going to encounter. Never, you know I've I've done I, I can't even count the number of ride-alongs that I've done. You know I've been in the Hillsborough County Honorary Deputy Program since 1997, long time. And I just rode a couple of weeks ago uh, with uh, with Jeff with Sergeant Jeff Catlin. Um, when they were doing a whole bunch of uh, drug arrests and uh, warrant roundups, and uh, that was a couple of Thursdays ago, right after the morning show, they were doing a uh, kind of an organized sweep, and that was a you know an, another eye-opening day, you know, riding along with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. But I'm glad this deputy is okay. And you talk about miraculous that the microphone up on his shoulder area took the bullet instead of him taking the bullet. Amazing. Uh, do cops make a lot of money? I don't know. No, not enough. Nope. I was not, say, to go not, out there and get shot at? Yeah, not enough to uh, get shot by uh, some homeless bum in the middle of a park. Not enough. Can I ask a question? Yeah. No. Why do people feel compelled to put like a a sticker for a cooler on the back window of their vehicle? Dude, I haven't seen that. What, 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 you mean a Yeti? Yes. What, I have what, a Yeti, man. That's a great I, cooler. Wait, wait, wait a sec. I, I, I understand the Yeti cooler is a great cooler. It's amazing. But why do I see people that put Yeti stickers on the back of their pickup truck windows? Hey, man, I'm gonna drive around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look cool with a sticker for my cooler. I mean, what? <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna igloo sticker on mine. I mean, I'm driving around. I'm starting to notice like people with Yeti, Yeti. stickers on the back. Ooh, that's a... know, and it's kind of like the you know when you get a. When you get like an iPhone, which I don't have, but I do have an iPad, you know, you, a lot of times you get that little white Apple sticker. Why do people put Apple stickers on their cars? On their cars? What? What? Is, what is that? Why? I'm um, not. I don't. But I'm not a big believer in putting stickers on your car, unless it's an MJ Morning Show sticker. Uh, all right. No, not that. Yeah. I mean, but MJ, I've seen these yep, Yeti, and they're little. They're like two inches by four inch stickers. Yeah, but why Yeti? Uh, you know what? My car's incomplete. Got to put a Yeti sticker on the back. Right there. I want to put some nuts on my uh, tow hitch. Oh, you know those? So <laughs> yeah. Remember Frog. those? Yep. Dude, oh, my God. Put... Froggy. Yeah. Come on, man. Or the, you know, the, right, just, the just, fake ones. Dude, you're, oh, put... you've, got, you've got like three words you utter on this show. What? Say it. No. I'm done. Well, I'll put a Yeti sticker on my bumper balls. But <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, buddy. Yeehaw! You, yeah. you don't see as many of those things anymore. No, but no. they were fun. Do you they remember were classy back? What early two thousands? Those the those bumper nuggets or bumper? Yeah. Whatever, those are all over the place. <laughs> I'm like, come on, who's really driving around with these? With this, you know, this scrotal deal hanging down. Awesome I mean, come people. On. It's scrotal. Ooh, awesome people. Word. It's scrotal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, scrotal. All right, speaking of that particular area, you ready for a blast from the past? A blast to the scrotal area? <laughs> well, Ow. well, 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 well <laughs> clo- Roxanne, you're close. What is the name of the man? Let's do like a little trivial pursuit here. Okay. Roxanne, mm-hmm. name the man whose wife cut off his junk and then threw it out her car window. Oh, Bobbitt. Bobbitt. Yes. What was her name? Her, yes. her name, name was Le- She had like two names, right? J- what was her Something name? Something Lane. Was hers Lo- Lane Bobbitt? Was, was her Lorraine. 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 There we go. Lorraine Bobbitt. Lorraine Bobbitt. Yeah. So John Wayne Bobbitt was the guy that had. Oh, he his- had two names. That's right. Yeah. John Wayne Bobbitt had his junk cut off by Lorraine Bobbitt. This is, uh, you know. 30 years ago. I mean, what was it like? It was like the early, it was like, what, 1994? 93. 93. It, it was in the winter, so it was probably at the end of 93. Oh, it, it was in the winter, all right, because yeah. the cops recovered John Wayne Bobbitt's wang at an intersection in a pile of snow in, I think it was Northern Virginia. 
Yeah. He, didn't he do porn? He lost his junk in man asses. Yeah, in man, it's manassas. <laughs> it's manassas. Have I been pr- I've been pronouncing it wrong all these it's years? Not man asses. Am I it's, thinking it's, wrong, incorrectly that he did a porn about like Frank and junk? He so, did. He uh, did. He he did a porn career. He and did. it was about Frank and junk, but right? But wait a minute. Yeah, he but, did everything he could to capitalize on it. Why this. am I bringing up John Wayne Bob at 30 years, 31 years, after his uh, wang was cut off by Lorena, and Lorena had it and was driving in Northern Virginia and threw it out of her car window, and, yeah. and it was recovered in a pile of snow. She why would she do that? She drove off with the... Piece, with the wang. She eventually stopped, called 911, and let them know where they can find it. Yeah, she tossed it out of the window of her car. After that, an that's exhaustive a, that's, a, that's a littering charge right there. They, they slapped that Aww. on her, too. All right, one charge of slopping off a wang and the other charge of littering with the wang. I'm going to give you a ticket for tossing out the dicket. <laughs> you know, you give me crap and then you spout I mean, out junk like that. Well, because that's intelligent, at least. Is it? <laughs> that's ticket, 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 ticket. That's, that's, all right, that's so, the level we've risen all right, to. All right. So, so uh, the reason why? Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> the clock is blocking my in, in the intersection. <laughs> Wait, no, I messed that what? up. What? <laughs> all right. What? I'm trying to do clock block, but with the the c word. You oh, know, okay. I'm not allowed to say it anymore. Right, 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 and it's blocking right. the intersection. All right, why am I bringing up John Wayne Bobbitt? I'll give you a courtesy laugh. (laughs) Thank you for that. I'll I'll give you a sympathy laugh. All right, so why is John Wayne Bobbitt in the news 30-plus years later? Was he running for Senate? No. He's lost all of his toes due to Camp Lejeune contaminated water. You've got to be kidding me. I have not. You know all those commercials? Did you serve in Camp Lejeune from 1961 to whatever? Oh, that guy's lost 11 Appendages in yes, life. Exactly. John Wayne Bobbitt was a veteran. Yes. They met while he was in the army. I, I saw the docu series uh, on uh, Prime a couple years ago. Apparently, he drank contaminated Camp Lejeune. You know those commercials that run on cable TV all day long? Yeah. I mean, he's got, has he called them yet? Has he called one of those lawyers? He must be the first call. Oh, my God. So he's lost all of his toes as a result of of a condition caused by water contamination. I saw a bottle of Camp Lejeune water at the gas station the other day right by the Celsius. Yeah, I don't think that's going to sell well. Camp (laughs) Camp Lejeune spring water. (laughs) That would be funny. I don't think that's going to sell well. Want to lose your toes? Listen, that kind of sucks. I mean, here you have men and women and families and kids who serve their country, uh, you know, stationed at Camp Lejeune, and then... They're drinking contaminated drinking water it's not for, cool. for decades. That sucks. Awful. It's terrible. All right, quick question. Froggy, who huh? has more Instagram followers, John Wayne Bobbitt or MJ? <laughs> I got to go with Bobbitt. Bob, of course, Bobbitt is more. I have 16,000. Oh, no. <laughs> he only has 600. John Wayne Bobbitt has 666. 666. <laughs> 666 oh followers. Come on, is that the real John Wayne Bobbitt? I don't know. You don't even know if that's the real Instagram account. The handle. That's yeah, that's probably a fake account. <laughs> probably. I don't even know if it's him. No, but Bobbitt was a former Marine and he yep. was diagnosed with toxic peripheral polyneuropathy, uh, which is known as TPP, uh, after being exposed to contaminated water at Camp Lejeune Military Training Facility in the late 1980s. And the condition caused nerve damage to his extremities. I wonder if his wang would have fallen off. Eventually. If, if Lorena didn't cut it off. From TPP? Yeah. His... <laughs> TPP. So. Yeah, it causes uh, severe nerve damage to extremities. And Bobbitt has had to have all of his toes amputated over the last uh, couple of years. Wow. So this dude's had 11 things sliced off of him? Yes. That's probably had that joke a few minutes ago. Oh, did he? Yeah. Was it funnier than the way I said it? I don't know. Yeah. Probably. But can you believe, I mean, John Wayne Bobbitt? Does he just bobble around now? <gasps> like, how do you walk? I mean, he can't oh, even, he can't count yeah. to 10 or 11 at this point. <laughs> What's going to take his fingers? Jesus. Poor guy. He, he couldn't count to 21. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Yeah, yeah that's right. He couldn't count to 21. Yes. Well, I was thinking of just his toes and his wang, you know. Uh, poor guy. What a traumatic uh, life. I know, for real. Oh, man. A uh, little update on O.J. Simpson. Yeah, still dead. Uh, yes, O.J. Simpson's still dead. 
the family has said that OJ is going to be cremated and that his brain is not going to be given to science for CTE. Yeah. yeah I why mean, not? I mean, come on. I mean, that was one of the one of the uh, theories on OJ and his temper, OJ uh, killing Nicole and and uh, Ron Goldman and him snapping. Yeah, that's one brain I want to see studied. Exactly. That I mean, that that is the brain that you want to be donated. And Jason Simpson, OJ's son, is a real estate agent right here in Pinellas County, right? No, it's Justin. It's Justin uh, I'm sorry, Simpson. Just, Justin Simpson. Mm-hmm. Justin Simpson is, a, right, in, in Pinellas yes, County. Correct. I think he just had a baby I saw somewhere online. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I didn't read this, but I heard someone say that... A mob guy came out recently. Okay, you're in that. I'm about to to segue into that. All right. So hold on, but I'll get to that in a minute. So the executor of OJ's estate says, no, his brain will not be uh, donated to study uh, for CTE, which is a a crying shame. I mean, OJ's brain ought to be looked at to see if he did show signs of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is CTE. That's that's the that's the NFL brain I want to see, right, Froggy? That's right. That's terrible, sir. On at least one occasion, someone has called saying that he's a CTE guy who studies the brain. Said attorney Malcolm Laverne, referring to chronic traumatic encephalopathy, a degenerative brain disease that has been studied in former football players and is associated with behavioral and cognitive issues, and cognitive issues uh, related to repeated head injuries. So the lawyer says it's a hard no. His what? entire body, including his brain, will be cremated. That kind of sucks. That, that does suck, and that's you know that's a disservice to humanity. Is there a reason? I I don't know. Maybe they're just hey. Listen, the executor also said that he's going to do everything possible to make sure that in OJ's death, mm-hmm. that 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 uh, Goldman, you know uh, Ron Goldman's father, uh, Fred that they don't get anything. So even the executor to OJ's estate is going to try to, you know, thwart Fred Goldman and family from collecting the $33.5 million judgment that OJ lost in a civil trial, which has now ballooned to over $100 million with interest. Oh, that's not cool. Yeah. And then what Roxanne was just referring to, this is insane. OJ Simpson allegedly hired... Uh, a Gambino family wise guy to take out Nicole Brown Simpson before OJ said, you know what? If you want to get things done, you got to do it yourself. So did he say that he hired him and what was the, I didn't read the story. So I need this information from you. Yeah. So did he say that he hired the family who then executed it or was he saying like, no, they didn't do it. No, they and didn't. then OJ the, did it. They did. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. The post reported that OJ Simpson allegedly hired goons from the Gambino mob family to kill his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, according to a Los Angeles collections agency owner who apparently confessed to a longtime Hollywood private detective last week. John Dunton, who claims he stayed silent until now for fear of, uh, fear of reprisal from the mafia, insisted that Simpson ordered the hit on his spouse. Well, O.J.'s dead, but the mob isn't, so uh, why yeah, is he talking uh, now? I, I a, agree. It's a lame excuse. He, yeah. ins- he insisted that Simpson ordered the hit on his spouse and was also on the site the day of the murders, according to private investigator Paul Baresi. Simpson died last week, uh, Thursday, uh, 76, cancer, was uh, tried for, obviously, the murders of Ron and Nicole. Uh Man, I'll tell you what, that Ron Goldman, wrong place, wrong time. Remember the story on that? Ron Goldman was a waiter, 25 years old. He was a waiter at one of Nicole Brown Simpson's favorite restaurants uh, in Brentwood. And do you remember the name of the restaurant? A Mezzaluna. It was. What? Man, that, oh, that's a. I'm impressed. It was me, me, I, Mezzaluna or Mezzaluna. Yes. I've been to all those places. I went yeah. to Mezzaluna. I went to to like walk it to see how far everything so you, was. You ate at Mezzaluna. No, I didn't eat there. I just went to where it's not. It's not Mezzaluna anymore. Well, I, you did the. I thought you just drove by the house. You did the whole we, whole tour. I wanted to see how far it was from Mezzaluna to to Bundy, and then from Rockingham. You know, Michelle and I did the same thing. 
We actually just timed. What are you uh, guys, a bunch of Mark Furman's here? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, was it Bundy? Well, or... he no, he botched the case. Hold on, was it Bundy? Who was on Gretna Green? Uh, Gretna o- Green was 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 that OJ's address or, or no? Bundy? No, Gretna Green was Nicole's. was her her address. Nicole's. Yeah. What, the, why am I saying Bundy? No, Bundy was another street that was tied up in that whole deal. Yeah, Rockingham. Rockingham was, was OJ. OJ's. Gretna Green was Nicole Brown Simpson, but there was something with Bundy. Maybe it was like driving up Bundy to get to OJ's house in Brentwood. Oh, my God. Guys, did you hear who the mobster was that he hired? Lefty Reguero. Yeah. You know, Donnie Brasco's best friend. Yeah. I'll do it. I'll thought, get made. I thought you were going to say Paulie Walnuts. Sonny Red gave me the order. Or Paulie Walnut. I can't do that. No. Hey, Paulie Walnut. Okay. I, I think I got it figured out, MJ. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, Froggy, or Polly. Uh, Bundy was the address of Nicole's place. Right. Bundy? But Gretna Green was the neighborhood. That was what her condo was called. Oh, that Does that make was? sense? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had some email. Not not email. I had some postal stalker that was sending me, like, uh, like stalking letters, like nasty, threatening letters. Right. Uh, what? Ba- seriously. I, when? W- back during the MJ and BJ days. Oh, back, oh. Yeah. Back in the uh, late 90s, it was like, uh, you know, mid to late, after the OJ deal, somebody was sending me, uh, like, threatening letters in the mail. To and, the like, re- cut out magazine letters L- Listen to me. With, with, with the return address was, like, Gretna Green. Ooh. Yeah. What did yeah. they say? Yeah. I, I, it's creepy. I, 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 yeah. Can't re- I can't remember. But in, anyway, so... Dude. There's a, a a claim that OJ tried to hire the mob anyway. So. I'll do it. Do you mm-hmm. know where the car is? Yeah, the, it's the in white a, Bronco. Yeah, it's in a museum in Tennessee. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. AC Cowling's white Ford Bronco. Somebody emailed me last week and said, "Hey, you were talking about the white Ford Bronco. It's at a museum in Tennessee. 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 Yeah." Okay, so what are they going to do with it? You just go up to it and look at it? I mean, give me a break. Yeah. I mean, just... You get to lie down in the back seat? Yeah. It's next to the Bunny and Clyde car. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Hold look, on. Is that true? Look next to it. You can see the car in the Andrew, background. Was, was that on the air? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, Andrew, can you do me a favor? Can you make sure you get with engineering? In our new studio, I got to be able to tell the difference with you on the air and with you, like just saying something in my ear. Then how can I mess with you? I, I can't. I can't mm-hmm. tell the. Mess I can't tell the, the difference. Air, like the rest yeah. of when you do off air, yeah. just go this before. And then, did you see that OJ Simpson's one of OJ Simpson's lawyers, one that's still alive? I mean, you know that all of OJ's lawyers are like dead. All right. So the you one know, Johnny Cochran had like a brain tumor. Flea Bailey. Uh, F. 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 Lee. Lee. You know what? I think he might be. Is he F. Lee? Did no, he I die? think he's. I think he's passed. I'm I think, pretty yeah, sure. I think he died. Yeah. Oh, no. He's the Lee. oldest. And then one. of course, a Kardashian. He, yeah, he made died. his made Rob, his mark with that. Case. Robert Kardashian. You know who spawned all these annoying uh, cockroaches? Oh, stop it now! They're also lovely. Kardashian well, really had no place in that trial. He was just there because he was OJ's close friend. Well, he had, yeah. he, had, he had the skunk haircut going on too. <laughs> Remember, he had the he had, little, he had yeah. little skunk wave. So the only lawyer that's still alive is the guy that that used to be on Legal Zoom commercials. Uh, Rob, uh, what was his name? Oh, that's right. Um, what was uh, his name? Uh. Robert. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Robert no. or something. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, what about the chick with the, the mole? Marsha? Oh, uh, Marsha Clark. She's still she's, yeah, she's she, the prosecutor. She was the prosecutor. How's she looking these days? Uh you know, I think I, she I, looks better. Yeah, I did a weekend I did a weekend with show. With her? No, I, I oh. did I did a weekend show on KFI in Los Angeles. She looks pretty good. Yeah, I, KFI. I, yeah, I did I did a I did a weekend show on KFI in Los Angeles and uh she was the show just before me. At KFI, That's funny. yeah. So I met, I met Marsha Clark back uh, around like 2000. Who was on after you, Phil Hendry? Uh, I don't know who was on <laughs> after me, but I, I yeah. So, uh, but listen to this: Alan Dershowitz says that he would have represented the victims in the OJ situation if they would have called him first. Of course. I'm like, Wait a sec. They were slashed. How, they're dead. How are they going to call? Hello. Uh, here, listen. Th- this is Alan, this is audio. This is actually Alan Dershowitz. Listen to this. I want to send my sincerest condolences to the Goldman family, the Brown family. They've done a phenomenal job in standing up for their relatives. And if they had called me first before the OJ team called me, I probably would have represented the Goldman or the Brown family. Right. Let's talk about the families. Uh, obvious, yes. Obvious. It was just kind of awkward when you saw 
he's referring to if the families would have called him, but it's just awkward that, yeah, if the victims, if they would have called me first, you know, I'm thinking of Ron and Nicole, you know, they, they couldn't place the call. Uh, Fester, you were thinking of uh, Robert Shapiro earlier. Yeah, oh, Ro- yes. Robert Shapiro. He's still alive. Yeah, he is still alive. Good for him. But remember there was like a whole thing on the O.J. lawyer curse that like a lot of the high-profile high yeah. lawyers, you know, were, were gone. 847 at the MJ Morning Show. And this brings to an end an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ. When we get back, man, I got a goofy, <laughs> I got a goofy story. Froggy, get your the hell was that? Get your okay. goofy, Froggy, get your goofy ready. My goofy, he's always ready. <laughs> Is that Hal Herman or Goofy? Both. It's hard, it's hard to tell. It's Goofy Herman. I have an Uber story you're not gonna believe. Goofy Uber. Now, look at this pile. <laughs> oh, Goofy Olympics was great. All right, when we get back, we are loaded. Oh, you know what's tonight? What? Monday nope. Night Raw. No, no, I don't think anyone has ever watched this before, but tonight millions are going to tune in. What? Hang on. That's a riddle. Riddle me this. I'll explain next. Don't move a long chunk of the MJ morning. If you're going into work now, if you're headed into work, remember, always bring us into the office for the 9 o'clock hour. And, you know, hey, how much longer is the 9 o'clock hour going to be here? I, you know, are they, are they, gonna, they might turn the 9 o'clock hour into all music. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm a big Cindy Lauper fan and all, but yeah. what, rather what, the morning what, show. I wonder what our listeners would think if our 9 o'clock hour just went away and it just became a jukebox. Should we do a survey? Should we, like, do some market research on this? Do it. Yeah, would, maybe, it would, would it be commercial free? Oh, <laughs> all right. So uh, hang on. We're loaded next here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. And don't forget the Cash Kitty's back. We did the Cash Kitty about 49 minutes ago. Cash Kitty returns just after the morning show at 10 o'clock. Then 12 noon, 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. Your chance to grab a grand every single time with the Cash Kitty. You listen for the word, then you text it in or enter it on the app or the website. So that's happening at 10 o'clock this morning here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. If you're looking for...
of the Backstreet Boys, and we are giving away tickets to New Kids on the Block. But, you know, kind of the same, you know, boy band kind of genre. Yeah, but different you know, generations, yeah, yeah. I it mean, seems, yeah, right? Well, yeah. They're new, both back. New Kids on the Block preceded the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and 98 Degrees. But, you know, still, it's you know, the boy band genre. And this hour, welcome, folks, to the 9 o'clock hour. It is 9.02 at the MJ Morning Show. And this hour, eh, probably, you know, within 20, 25 minutes or so, we're going to give away a pair of tickets to see New Kids on the Block with Paula Abdul and DJ Jazzy Jeff. Whoa. And that's going to be in July at the Mid-Florida Credit Union Amphitheater. And we've got free tickets coming up in just a bit. We'll tell you exactly when to call in and win. Froggy. During the break, said, man, did you see SNL over the weekend? And I said, yes, I did. And I said, it was actually pretty funny. The right, You know, they go into these spells where they just have just remarkably unfunny episodes. And you just, it just, you don't laugh at anything. It's like, this is awful. It's terrible. And uh, Froggy. Do the one I saw. I only saw one yeah. bit. I never watch it. Yeah, well, I, I I didn't watch it live, but Michelle and I uh, yesterday afternoon, I'm you know I'm knee deep in show prep, and I said, ah, right, let's just put on SNL, see what happened, and it was actually pretty funny. I mean, pound for pound, it's one of the the funnier SNL episodes I've seen in a long time. All right, and Froggy honed in on this Beavis and Butthead sketch. Fesh, did you see this? Which whoever came up with this idea it was just, it just totally brilliant. Is so hysterical. Yeah. I've stopped watching SNL like four years All ago. Right, but this is funny. Okay. You'll like this. This is funny. So the, the whole premise is it's like an interview with some scientist. It's supposed to be like a serious interview about AI. Yeah, right? uh, some scientist and artificial intelligence. And right behind the interviewer. How they have the audience, you know, yeah, behind the, the audience. audience is behind the interview. And one of the audience members is dressed up to look like <laughs> Butthead from Andy Beavis. Has, he looks like him in the face. <laughs> like Beavis and Butthead. Like, like play a, a little bit of. All right. It. All right. So I mean, it's just a funny bit. All so, right. All right. Go, go ahead and uh, let's see. Uh, you got control, or I got yeah. control. You got it. Something else is playing though. So you gotta, you gotta go, go ahead and minimize. So hit of a, course. Hit, hit escape. Escape. Don't. Yeah. So just I got, I got close all the windows, windows except for the one that Froggy is open. All right. I want right. to just close. Oh, keep Let's these things. Yeah. All right. That was it. All right. All right. That, that was the one. You close it. Yeah, just leave it alone. Okay, we'll get right, to So yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. More. Start. Start. No, you don't have to close everything there else. There we go. All right. So roll this back. And, and tonight's live stream town hall funny. will discuss the potential power and pitfalls of the coming AI revolution. You won't want to miss this. So I guess it's like some News Nation, you know, spoof. I'm joined by MIT Dean of Technology, Professor Norman Hemming. Thank you, Bobby. Well, let's get into it. Professor, you've been very outspoken about the threat AI poses. Can you explain your stance to the average American? <laughs> so, okay, uh, we're laughing at I'm, the part. I'm sorry, what? He's staring at the guy right over the interviewer's shoulder. AI to the average American. Uh, certainly. Um, to be clear, I'm not anti-AI. I just Beavis uh, believes. I believe AI needs to be properly regulated. I'm sorry. Professor, is there a problem? Um, yeah. There's a gentleman in your audience who looks strikingly similar to Beavis from the cartoon Beavis and Butthead. All right, so that was Beavis? Yes. Yeah. Right. I'm not familiar with that cartoon, but would it help if he moved seats? Yeah. So it's it's Ryan Gosling with this, he looks just like him. With this big, huge, blonde, puffy pompadour. And they even have the, 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 the extended, long nose per yes. they, they have a they have a nose prosthetic on them. You gotta see what they bring in the other dude. Yeah. Though. This yeah. is the best. Talking about me? I have no idea what's going on. I'm sorry. What? Yes. Can you move the seats? Uh, okay. Sure. I'm sorry. I just I've never heard of that cartoon character. <laughs> Roxanne's dying. Jeff it's Roxanne. like it's like a it's like a human cartoon. live action uh, Beavis from Beavis and Butthead. So he gets up. And then another guy sits in to replace that scene, and it, the guy looks like Butthead. What is your worst case scenario? And, uh, well, and then the, the, guy that, the guy that's dressed up as Butthead 
is it's even better looking than the Beavis. Yeah. Here he comes. And, and he's got. But it's <laughs> created the AI. Can't we just program it to not do that? Well, it depends. Oh my God. Are you serious? What? I think that's a valid question. No. Now there's a gentleman behind you that looks like Butthead. <laughs> Professor, just because our audience members aren't as informed on the issue as you doesn't it's very funny. Butthead. She loses it right here. Butthead she does. Butthead from the cartoon. <laughs> he beavers his friend. I really like to move on and discuss AI, so would you like him to move? Yes. Thank you. The man with the gray shirt and exposed gums. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> And then she loses it. Because <laughs> the, the SNL actor has got the whole, like, the pursed lips with the mouth in yeah. it. And then, yeah, so so Beavis, right. Beavis was the blonde, and then Butthead was the dark head. Uh, what a great bit. Yeah. Uh, it just, it was, all right, so, folks, if you want to laugh, just Google <laughs> SNL Beavis and Butthead, and the video from Saturday Night will come out. It's, it's hysterical. Well, Fetcher, it's not funny enough for you. It's, yeah. it's funny. And yeah. Ryan Gosling, they're yeah. wearing the shirts, the skull shirt and the, the beaver shirt. The they shirt, should have the the sh worn ACDC <laughs> yeah. or, you know. No, 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 they're they yeah. on the show, yeah. but they're like, they're like, I've never heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hysterical bit. Good you stuff. know, uh, it was actually a very funny show. Pound for pound, it was one of the funnier SNLs I've seen in a while. The writing, you know, was good. And uh, Ryan Gosling could not keep it together. He was laughing. They la they, I don't like it when they laugh like he, that. He could not compose. Like, almost every skit that he was in, he was losing it. It's like the Carol Burnett show. They just laugh at each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Come on. All right, where the heck was I? Uh, oh, let's move on to Goofy. Hey, Goofy. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait. Let's welcome, Go <laughs> let's welcome Goofy to the MJ Morning Show. Thanks for having me. It was terrible. Uh, Goofy, would you like to comment on a Disneyland? This is not Disney World, but Disneyland out in Anaheim. Would you like to comment on a guest that claims that she was permanently injured when you fell on top of her back in April of 2022? <laughs> that bitch is a liar. <laughs> I can't really do Goofy. Sounds like how? Yeah, Katrina Griffin. But my lawyer is Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I'd like to say that my <laughs> client is completely innocent. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> These are fabricated claims. Katrina Griffin, who you might remember from Katrina and the Waves. Oh, yeah, I love them. Yeah. Yes. She was at Disney with her daughter back mm. in April of 2022 when the traumatic experience occurred, and she's filed a lawsuit in Orange County Superior Court. She reportedly bent over to tie her daughter's shoe when Goofy <laughs> wa walked directly at her, causing her to topple hard onto the, the cement. And then claimed that Goofy then fell onto her. <laughs> That's funny. With all of his body weight, can you imagine having Goofy fall on you while you're bent over to tie your daughter's uh, shoes? He's not an overweight dog. He's pretty thin, right? But he's really tall. <laughs> Flanks. You know, listen, Minnie. Th what do you think, Minnie? Minnie. <laughs> Minnie. Hey, Minnie. <laughs> She's Minnie! Looking, Minnie, are you looking at your phone, Minnie? Roxanne, are you part of the show this morning? Oh, no. <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking to you, and you're, like, zoned out. Yeah, Mickey, hey, what, what are you Mickey doing? Mickey and Goofy are talking to you. We're, we're, like, we're, we're, all, we're all looking at you, and you're, you're buried in your phone. You're right? ignoring Goofy. What are you doing over there? I'm so sorry. Hi, guys. I was just What is on to your tongue? Out. I don't know. You've got, like, it looks like you were at a traffic stop, and you tried to eat the crack rock. You put what, what Molly? Stick, stick your tongue out. you got crack rock on your tongue. Oh, that's stick, that stick your tongue out. That's why I wasn't paying attention. What? I was eating my crack. <laughs> Listen, you got chunks of crack rock on your tongue. I, I, I didn't know you did crack, man. <laughs> and I got Katrina the waves getting Damn. getting injured by Goofy I, I, at, I, at Disneyland in, in Anaheim. I, I didn't know. You know what she said? Ow! She went, ow! You know, did, yeah, ow. Go, Goofy <laughs> fell on her. She went, ow! 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 ow. Yeah. All right. Uh, you smell like my baby were lonely. So, listen. Please don't direct any questions directly to my client. He can't comment on the situation. That sucks, though, because, you know, <laughs> the guys that play Goofy are typically tall individuals because Goofy's yes. a, you know, a tall, lanky character. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Guys, what I was looking at on my phone. You don't sound like Minnie. My daughter likes to. My daughter loves to watch these videos, MJ, 
of Disney secrets they reveal. And I've been meaning to talk to Andrew about this, but it's all this like behind the scenes stuff that happens there. What about that they the try to keep hush? Yes. The underground She's tunnels. She's obsessed with those. Oh, the yeah. tunnels. Yeah. And, and Does she want to she want to tour to the tunnels? Yes. She's like, Mom, have you ever hey, been in the tunnels? I'll tell you what. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I can't arrange for a tour of the Disney, tu- Disney tunnels, but I can get her into the North Korean infiltration tunnels. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Don't tell them. Near, near the North Korea-South Korea border. Yeah. Uh, not far from Panmunjom. <laughs> you know, I can, would she like to see the, would, the infiltration tunnels? She would be fascinated yeah. by that. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, this is bizarre. An Uber driver has been taken out in a phone scam gone bad. I mean, this is a crazy story. What happened? All right, you can drop the goofy now. <laughs> okay. Out of Charleston, South Carolina, authorities have arrested, I'm sorry, um, this is Ohio, not, not South Carolina. So South, South Charleston, Ohio, correction. Authorities have arrested a man in his 80s he murdered an Uber driver, and both were the victim of a scam call. Um, what? Th- this, wait to hear this crazy story. The old gentleman is 81-year-old William Brock, and he's been hit with a felony charge of murder. Uh, and additional counts are forthcoming, according to the sheriff's office. And... The Uber driver that has been killed is Lolitha Hall, and she was shot multiple times. Is this dash cam of him pointing the gun right at her? Yeah, yeah. This, this is this is unbelievable. Jeez. The Uber driver went to the eighty-one-year-old's house, William Brock, because she got an Uber call on the app to go okay. pick up somebody at this address. Investigators kind of put the whole story together. They arrived at the scene about the report that someone's been shot at this address. All the police, multiple agencies arrive, and they found the Uber driver, this woman, a 61-year-old woman, an Uber driver, they found her on the ground with multiple gunshots. And then uh, Brock, the 81-year-old uh, male, he had an injury to his head. But here's what happened. Prior to the shooting, a scam phone caller, a male, called Brock, the elderly 81-year-old with the grandparent scam, saying that one of his relatives was in jail. The scammer then threatened the 81-year-old and demanded money. But at the same time, the scammer or somebody he's working with, placed an order for the Uber to go to the house to pick up a package. The package was the money. So the 81-year-old, they try to extort him. They have the Uber go to the 81-year-old's house. They think he's an elderly, uh, easy mark. And the Uber driver has no idea that she's being used as a mule to pick up the package. Oh, no. oh gosh. The 81-year-old thinks that the Uber driver is part of the scam and <gasps> racket, pulls a gun. The Uber driver is shot and killed oh, in no. the driveway. Oh, my God. I mean, is this a crazy story or what? So Grandpa thinks he did a good thing by catching a thief? Yeah, but you, you, can't, you can't shoot you somebody. You can't shoot and kill a thief. Exactly. So the Uber driver was unarmed, didn't make any threats, didn't attack Brock, nothing. This, she was just an Uber driver going to pick up what she thinks is a ride. So they must have used some kind of a dummy phone. They used a, you know, a burner phone to order the Uber to his house to pick up the loot. And clearly this was an 81-year-old that knew that he was being scammed. He, he wasn't going to fall for it. And then he has a gun because he thinks that the uh, the vehicle coming to the house to pick up the package is in on it. And she was a completely innocent victim, just an Uber person trying to make a living. 61-year-old driver. Jeez. What happens to Grandpa now? Uh, he's been charged with murder. Uh, yep. But what happens to uh, him? I, 81 years old. He's a victim of, this, mm. of a scam. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... I mean, what a crazy spin of events here. 
So she shows up, thinks she's just picking up a package, and the old man pulls out a revolver, holds her at gunpoint, demanding to know the identities of the scammers. Also took Hall's phone to prevent her from making calls. When Hall tried to get in her car and get away, Brock shot her. During the struggle between the two and the car door, uh, she was shot more times. Uh, Brock, the uh, old man, the 81-year-old, calls 911. They arrive, and he was arrested on a murder charge. Wow. Yeah. Because the driver did not present any immediate threat even if she was part of the racket, there was no immediate threat. Uh, the driver didn't have a knife, a gun, and of course she was just totally innocent. Did the old man think he was doing a good thing up until the time he called 911 mm. and they arrived and arrested him? Mm. Jeez. Mm. Mm. Man. Is that not the craziest freaking story? All part of like the grandparents' scam. Yeah. Grandma, Grandpa, I'm in trouble. I'm locked up. What? And, you know, I need you to send money. They won't let me out of jail. Send $5,000. You know how many millions and millions and millions of dollars have been lost to the grandparents' scam? Oh, I bet. Take and, my social security number. And this 81-year-old guy was wise to it, and he thought that he was going to be some kind of, you know, Charles Bronson vigilante or something. He could face up to 15 years in prison, so he'll get out when he's 96. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he'll be ready for pickleball mm -hmm. when he gets out. Hey, you said scam. I just want to let you guys know about a scam that's going on right now. You hear about this one? Uh, I, don't, I don't know until you tell us. All right. The old uh, call you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You say yes. And they record. Your, no, it's back around. Yeah. But, it's coming back around. But I, I haven't heard of any case where the yes scam has really yielded any serious damage to anybody. Okay. Mm. Well, yeah. I, I know they're trying to do it. They're yeah. trying to capture yeses the, right now. Yeah, that is a thing. Yeah. The, the yes scam has been around for a dozen years, a bit, maybe longer. Uh, but I still, I haven't seen, I haven't seen a story where the yes scam. I, I'm wondering. I think there's a, a bit of the yes scam, which is kind of urban legend as well. No, no, Roxanne is absolutely right, and that's why every time somebody asks me a question on the phone, <laughs> and the answer is yes, yes, I answer it like Lil John. Yeah. <laughs> And they can never use it again. <laughs> and Froggy answers like Hal Herman. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, ask Hal out uh, for lunch. What I'm saying is we've heard of this yes scam where, hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? And you say yes. And and the, the, the whole premise is, is that by saying yes, they capture your voice and then they try to use your voice. Okay. But... But I, I just, I've never seen any any stories with real payoffs of anyone using. Yeah. Uh, no payoff. Well, here's the deal. Yeah. They, when you say yes, it also indicates to the bad guy that, yes, this is a working phone line and you will answer your phone to individuals whose numbers you don't know. So it like le can lead to other scams. Yeah. Listen, no no doubt about it. But uh, the, the point is, is. Uh, you know, people that are going to pick up unknown numbers are going to pick up unknown numbers. You should I, just say no yeah, instead. I, well, I don't say any. I just don't pick up unknown numbers. Mm -hmm. If I don't recognize, if you are not in my directory, uh, I've got the Google phone assistant. So I can just hit screen call and then they get a message. This is, uh, this person is screening your call with Google phone assistant. Uh, please state your business or, you know, please state the reason for your call. And then if it's somebody I want to talk to, legitimately, they'll leave a little message. If it's a scam call or if it's some kind of a, a robo call, they, they hang up. But, you know, like legitimate stuff. I, I do not pick up uh, calls from numbers that I don't recognize. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, 921 at the MJ Morning Show. We have new kids on the block with Paula Abdul and DJ Jazzy Jeff at the Mid-Florida Credit Union Amphitheater coming up on July 19th. I got a pair of tickets, and we will give them away the minute we get back with the final chunk of the MJ Morning Show next. And uh, it's not just a, a phenomenal great prize. Uh, also, uh, a ton of content. Uh, Spirit Airlines uh, ticket counter person gets into a fight. Oh, also, are you aware of the baggage scam? 
there was like a baggage extortion thing that apparently is becoming more prevalent. No, at the, <laughs> <laughs> at the airport. Hey, a lot of Ugh. lot of little loose ends coming up in the final segment next. And don't forget the cash kitty is back at ten o'clock. So the cash kitty is just over half an hour away. Roxanne's going to have the next nationwide keyword for your chance to text it in and win $1,000 coming up at 10 o'clock with the Cash Kitty here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. Stand by.
the soothing sounds of Italian composer Boccherini in the final chunk of the MJ Morning Show. Of course, uh, maybe you'd rather hear... What, what do you think? Do you like this one better? Hey, so earlier today I said that uh, Froggy verbally assaulted me via text over the weekend, calling me a wuss and a puss and, you know. All, you know <laughs> wow. That's, that's a lot. Know. So Froggy sends me a text and thinks that if I don't answer him back in 12 seconds, meanwhile, I send Froggy texts that go unanswered for months. Froggy what? never, never. Yeah, Froggy never picks up his phone, ever. I never replied months later. That's just silly. <sighs> But don't you think I, I'm going to bring it up? What I sent you? Yeah, go ahead. Fester Roxanne. Mm-hmm. Don't you think having a live MJ Morning Show listener event would be fun? Yeah, Ooh. for sure. And we could have live music. I yes. have no problem with this. Yeah, we absolutely and, and, should do. And that. Hell Herman live. Right. So, why, why wouldn't we do that? Uh, Froggy wants to do because MJ's afraid. I'm not afraid. What is? Why do you think I'm afraid? Do you know how many live events I've done over the years? I just think well, you, you should take calls from listeners and see if they'll come. We'll, we'll do it. We'll, we'll do give, it tomorrow. Give Let's, us more details. All right, well, hang on. Just live music, booze, where? Well, we don't have a In venue. In your ass, dude. I don't know. We got to <laughs> think about it. I just came up with it. Froggy, calm down. Language, please. I think it would be so fun. I only have room I- I'm in. There's hack shows out there that do it and sell out places. We can do the same. We're just as hacky. Froggy wants to pick a venue. Do you have any idea? Like, what venue would be ideal? Like the amphitheater? Dave and Buster's. All right. The amphitheater? What the know, hell? You said an event. <laughs> If we, if we, are you thinking like he wants to do a, a theater or, so, or a, like a, a restaurant or a club? A club restaurant. Yeah. 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 So Froggy wants to perform as Hal Herman with his entire. How many members of your band? Five. Seriously? But also, we could get a band. Uh, we have another buddy that plays in like a cover band. We All could right. have them play. We could uh, have, you know what? We uh, could have listener uh, karaoke. Uh, l- listen, Robin Zander lives in town. I can see if they can open for Hal Herman. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm cheap, looking for uh, bigger let me, openers. Let me, let me see if Cheap Trick can open. I don't want to give those guys a chance. I don't think they're going to make it. <laughs> I don't want them to ride Hell's Man, coattails. I, I'm still smiling after Cheap Trick was at uh, Palmasia Country Club a couple of Fridays ago. They were they were just great. I thought you were going to say you're still smiling after hey, Hell Herman. Do me a favor. If anyone runs into Robin Zander uh, in Safety Harbor, anyone runs into Robin, uh, tell them that I, I thought they were fantastic. And it was it was just a phenomenal show. At Palmasia in South Tampa two Fridays ago, it was, it was enormous. Yeah, great. Tell them that. I, great. I, can I point something out? We just ran a commercial for Heart, the Heart Tour. Mm-hmm. There are still plenty of tickets available. Uh, I, I got to be honest. I, I th- you know, it's Heart and Cheap Trick, and for me, Cheap Trick is the bigger draw. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah listen, I, think- I, I like Heart. I don't have a problem with Heart, but for me, I'm a bigger Cheap Trick fan. I'm thinking, you know, maybe promote, you know, cheap trick at Emily Arena later this month. With heart. With with heart. <laughs> exactly. All right, enough about that. That's what I'm thinking. All right. How about our live event? Roxanne, don't you have any idea? Don't you, don't yeah. you own a bunch of places? Where can we no, go? No, I'm actually Googling <laughs> oh, right the now. the meat market. Let's shut the oh. meat market down and invite all our riffraff listeners. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I just went and saw some live music at a place in St. Pete, and now I can't think of the name. I mean, it was like five months ago. Janice Landing. No, it wasn't Janice Landing or Ruby's Elixir. That's all that's coming up right now. But they, they I know there's a cool place. Let's do it in the general RV showroom. Hell yeah. With, let's do it. Right in front of Fester's desk. All right, so let's let's deal with this tomorrow morning when we have more time. It's 9.33. i got to give away the new kids on the block. Paul Abdul, D, uh, DJ Jazzy, Jeff Tickets here. But okay. Froggy wants to do a live event with his Hal Herman act. Well, not just I mean, the Hal Herman thing is just a joke. I think a live event would be fun, don't you think? Well, well it would have to be with Hal Herman. Wouldn't so. your band play? Yeah, we'd have to have a. Have well, a my band, band could play. That's what my I'm saying. My buddy's band could play. Yeah. Froggy has such a discombobulated idea. There's a good idea somewhere in that, but not the way he's presenting. Yeah. Oh so- yeah. Why don't you present it better? You big idiot! If we did a stage version, if we did a stage version of a morning show with occasional musical interludes, yes, that's what I'm saying. We could that's be not, a, that's exactly what you didn't say. Like a podcast, we that's, could do. You said nothing like that, ladies and gentlemen. I, Get out! Go, I, fro- go, Froggy! No, you're not invited to the live event. Why, why did he leave? Because he's a. 
You know why. Come on, get, get Froggy, you know calm why. down. It's okay. My idea, you know. It's all right. <laughs> calm down. All right, Froggy's back. I'm back. All right, let's give away the new kids on the block. We can have them play. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. New kids on the block, Paul Abdul, DJ Jazzy Jeff. They're going to be at the Mid-Florida Credit Union Amphitheater on Friday, July 19th. And we got your tickets right now. Caller number 50. Caller 50 at 800-990-1047. Caller 50. You'll win tickets right now to see New Kids on the Block with Paula Abdul. Caller 50, 800-990-1047. Oh, you know what we could do? What? Mayor to this friend is dating the fat guy from NSYNC. What now? Mayor to this friend. Oh, Joey Fatone? Is he the fat one? He, well, his last name does spell fat one. Oh, well, there you go. But, but we he's could have a, him come. He's a really nice guy. He could come perform. Hold on, Meredith's friend? Is like dating him. Really? And he's very serious. Wow. Okay, so maybe we can use some, uh, some of that Some power. coal to get the Joey Fatone to sing. And he can open for Hell He Herman. can open for Hal Herman. Or even yeah. perform with Hell. Yeah. Also, don't some guys from, uh, was it ACDC, live down in Sarasota? I think Winger lives here. We can have that. <laughs> Winger. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, man. All right. We'll talk about it. We'll, we'll, we'll brainstorm. Do you have any idea the little teaser I put out a little while ago that... You said something about an airline company. No, no, before that, or maybe after that. I said something about, I don't think anyone has really watched this in any great numbers, but tonight the viewership will be millions. Oh, yeah, what is that? Can you tell? Um, uh, is there more women's basketball on? What? I don't uh, know. Yes, and she did a cameo during Weekend Update on Saturday Night Live on Saturday night. Oh, but, Caitlin Clarkson. Yeah. <laughs> no, What's her name? No, Caitlin Clark. Ca- Caitlin Kelly Clark. Clark. Kelly yeah. Clarkson. Yeah. Ah, Caitlin Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> no, what just, is she? The season's over, I It's thought. just Caitlin Clark. No, it's the uh, WNBA draft tonight, which I don't think anyone has ever watched ever. I think, what? I think the ratings are negative. But tonight, it's going to be on ESPN, and I would venture to say she's expected to go number one in the first round, Caitlin Clark. And does that put her with the awful yeah. Indianapolis team? So yeah, they have first pick, and uh, oh, Indianapolis is awesome. The name of their team is the Awful. <laughs> it's the Indianapolis, the Indianapolis awful. awful. Yes, they'll be better with her. Fantastic. So uh, the NBA or the WNBA draft is tonight, and it's going to be watched by a lot of people. When in fact, no one has ever watched this in the past. Good for them. Cool. Yeah, they're starting to dunk in that league. I saw. I saw a bunch of videos of women dunking now. Yeah. They're very boring dunks. I'm, I'm still not going to watch. And, and brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. Mm, as, a, as a matter of fact. Yeah. All right. Let's see. What else did we have here? Oh, I. what else did I tell? Oh, well, the, you teased the, that baggage yeah, deal. Yeah, the baggage deal, man. Uh, no. Um, so there are more and more reports that are coming out regarding this. And it's airline passengers claiming that Ticket counter personnel at airlines are hitting them up for a bribe in order to get their overweight luggage through without a jammed up, jacked up uh, number. I saw I'd that. do that. Yeah. I bribed the guy at the Jamaican airport one time. <laughs> How? Uh, just to cut the line. The line was way too long, and I gave him like 20 bucks, and he took our stuff and took us to the front of the line. Are you serious? Yeah. It's Jamaica. They take the money. Same thing with cruise ships. You get off the cruise ship, you hire the guy with the dolly for ten bucks, and he gets you right past the line. Yeah, mm. yeah. so people. Yeah, well, most U.S. airlines limit the weight to fifty pounds. That's right. And some of the some of the cheaper ones are like forty pounds. Are they like a legion? Really? Yeah, forty pounds. Yeah, like a forty pound bag. And then they then if you're like over forty, then they really jam you up, right? Yeah. I've never been on a legion. However, uh, Michelle and I. Might just take like a weekend jaunt to Fargo, North Dakota, because yeah. that's, uh, North Dakota is the only U.S. state that I've not been to. I just read some travel bloggers' assessment of all all the states, and that one is the worst. Uh, North Dakota, yeah. Well, yeah. there's probably nothing to do no, there. I've been there. There's nothing yeah. to do there. But, it's we, it's awkward. It's very but, weird. But I want to go to Fargo, North Dakota. Yeah, I'm gonna go so, buy a car from Mister Lungard. So <laughs> and get the true coat. <laughs> You're yeah. a damn liar. You're, you're 
bleeping liar. You're a bleeping liar. Yeah, the troop coat comes on there, you know. There's only so much I can do. It's done at the factory. It's done at the factory. (laughs) Of course, uh, a dramatic reenactment with Froggy and myself from the movie Fargo, Mm. from the Coen brothers. No, but here's the deal. There are more and more reports that are coming out where passengers are saying that the ticket counter people are saying, hey, uh, this bag is overweight. It's going to be, you know, 50 bucks, or you can just slip me uh, a five or a 10. There you go. And I can make this whole problem go away. There are even reports of airline employees at the ticket counter giving passengers their Venmo so they can Venmo uh, oh. the passenger directly. Uh, the airlines have like zero tolerance for this and they will fire an employee, but it's going on. So it, it comes down to you want to pay the employee a little tip. Yeah, don't you, don't you tip when you check your bag? No, you, no, you check. You tip the porter. You don't tip. You don't tip the person at the counter. That no, is, is outside. The, if you do it outside, yeah, I'll give the yeah. guy a ten dollar yeah, bill because yeah, they're an independent contractor. But he'll take they're, he'll take care of my bag yeah, if you give him a ten. The right? guys at the curb are hustling for tips. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? They want tips. so you tip those guys. But not inside. But not inside. Those are the airport employees that work for the airline. But you got a bunch of unscrupulous. I don't think it's a. a I don't think it's an epidemic, but there are more and more stories are popping up about overweight baggage uh, or too many bags. And because you know what happens these days, you you get like your first bag is like, I mean, most of the airlines are raising it to what like thirty five or forty bucks now. Right. Yeah, and then like if you check like. Like a second bag, it's another like fifty bucks it doubles, and something. Yeah, and it's and even then more you, money. you check a third bag, it's more than your freaking round trip ticket wherever yeah. the hell you're going. I mean, it, it it's getting to be ridiculous. Uh, just more and more stories of airline employees that are trying to scam their employer by taking a tip and not collecting the money for the airline for their employer. I'll tip them. I'm so all for people scamming their. Employers. More and more of that is is going on. And then, of course, uh, if you want to catch the spirit of Spirit Airlines, go down to the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood Airport. Uh, here's a Spirit employee telling a, a passenger, F you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's always them. Oh, oh man. It, it does seem to be that way. Show me your boarding pass. All right. So this Spirit employee was very offended because this lady said something rude to her. I think she's taking it a little too far, though. I think she's going to prevent her from being on the plane, which I think is a, I think it's a little bit of an abuse. Yeah, not the best uh, audio quality. I will not miss my flight because I think you're just taking a little too extreme. <laughs> the spirit employee said F you geez, to the passenger. You know that restaurant Dick's Last Resort? <laughs> no. Where what? they curse at you the, yeah. the and they treat you like crap and Hold they throw on. the yeah. menus at your face. Well, where's that? Oh, it wait, one, a, there's there a bunch was, of them. There was one in Orlando that we went to one time. I'm like, all right, I don't need this. They're like, you want a Sprite? They'll be like, yeah. And they'll be like, bleep your Sprite. I'll bring it in a second, but oh, I'll that's spin the, in it. That's the gimmick there is <laughs> yeah. they, they curse you? and They're, they're dicks. Yes. They're rude to you? So I think Spirit should go that route and just go, for the, go with the gimmick and just be the rude airline. <laughs> be the rude airline. <laughs> just rude air. You got to look at clips of Dick's La- Dick La- I don't. I can't imagine why people go to that place. They literally treat you like crap. But that's the gimmick. You go there to be treated like. I saw a waiter just right. throw a whole thing of napkins in a little kid's face. Are you serious? Yeah, they go through a lot of napkins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that at 943, we're going to call it a day. A very productive Monday. But don't forget, today is tax day. April 15th, tax day. If you want to see me at the airport post office at 458 this morning, mailing in my uh, estimated and my payment due with my tax extension uh you can see the picture of me at 458 sticking my tongue out at the irs in my selfie yeah that's on my instagram at certified mj radio that's certified mj radio and uh, chloe i think is knocking on 300 comments now whoa uh with the picture of chloe my lovely daughter in the er on saturday yeah if you uh did not see chloe in the er the image is also on my Instagram at Certified MJ Radio on Instagram. That's Certified MJ Radio. At 944, folks, we're out. Have a fantastic day. Cash Kitty happens in 15 minutes at 10 o'clock with Roxanne. And your chance to win 1000 bucks on the way. 
We'll see you tomorrow, and let's be careful out there.